From downtown, this is Tim Kitzer from NBA Jam, and you're listening to Nintendo Main Podcast. Boom shakalaka! This week on Nintendo Main, I think our guest John Wedgworth would agree, Zelda Dungeons are back, baby! Plus, Nintendo finally cares about F-Zero again. Well, for now. Who needs Zelda when you can unlock every character in Peglin? 42 going on 50. Welcome to Nintendo Main Podcast, episode 441, your place to hear Nintendo fans talk about a brand new Legend of Zelda game that is out now, and a couple of us have played it. But we are your hosts. I'm Trey, old bet staircase forever, Johnson. I'm Jeremy, another one bit the dust, Mikowski. <laughs> I'm John, birthday boy knitter. And we have a special guest this week. John, absinthe makes the heart grow fonder, Wedgworth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Not drinking the real stuff, are you? Isn't it a, it's a little hazardous? Oh, but the, well, it doesn't have to Joan, if that's what you're asking, but it's... Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's got wormwood in it. Okay. Delicious. It's like Malort. Malort has wormwood in it, supposedly. But yeah, um, Echoes of Wisdom came out last week, as we said, uh, came out on Thursday of last week, and uh, I was playing it, you know, Jess and I, we had a little bit of time to play it on Thursday and Monday, and while I was playing on Monday... My Switch let me know that John Wetchworth was also playing Echoes of Wisdom, and I was like, oh, hey, I think we should have another person on here who has played the game. So I uh, reached out to you to see if you were available to come by. And so talk, that we can talk have to me. an Echo of Wisdom? Yes, that, yeah. so we can have Echoes between us. No, it's always wow. nice to have, you know, in case, you know, I'm the only one on the show who has played it. Well, John saw a little bit of it while you were here, while you are here at our house, but... Just a little bit. It's nice to have somebody else to to talk to you about it so it's not just me just you know talking about it and, and it's, it's also nice for me because i'm not just a third wheel fourth wheel whatever i can count <laughs> sure <laughs> but yeah we yeah we both have we both have echoes of wisdom it is here now i think it's great why don't we just uh start off with that or do you want to for anybody who doesn't know you know john wester has been on the show a few times you know you uh, know john n- 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 nerd noise radio um Various versions of that. Look up Nerd Noise Radio around the internet. You can find it. Or if you want to say Re- specific Wherever plugs, podcasts are sold. You can get it for free, too. Don't yes. have to pay, don't even have to pay for it. Yes. Wait, what? Podcasts are free? <laughs> <laughs> We've been paying for all the time. <laughs> well, I mean, if you like a podcast, you should pay for it also. Like, you should go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash podcast. And I've said it before, but, you know, we have, speaking of buying podcasts... We do actually have individual uh, Patreon episodes that you can buy individually now where you don't have to actually have a monthly rate. You can buy our bonus shows for $3 each. So check that out at patreon.com slash Nintendo Main Podcast. If you want to hear the extra, the the hidden WART radios or expansion packs or, or whatever else is on there. And there's a good amount of stuff that is behind the paywall. So check that out. Quite a bit of stuff. But yeah, um, Echoes of Wisdom, Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is out now. And uh, I'm I'm a uh, I don't know I'd say maybe I'm like ten hours in it maybe twelve I don't know I, I made it through two dungeons which like I said at the beginning of the show dungeons are back and they yeah. are they are glorious actually another thing that I'm really excited about is motherfucking heart pieces are back yes I really missed heart I really missed looking for heart pieces that was a big thing that I, I mean I I, I don't know, always a hundred percent games but whenever I play a Zelda game I always always try to collect all the hearts you know unless it's like breath of the wild or tears of the kingdom whatever because that was different but if it's something involving like actual like side quests with with heart pieces or whatever i will try to get get i will try to get all of them because they're always weren't those one things pretty much like heart pieces because you got a heart for every four of them what what one thing what do you mean 
Whatever the hell they're called that you get in the shrines. Yeah, but th- but those are like not they're not specifically designed around like you know, it, you can use them for different things. Like you can use them for hearts mm. or you can use them for your whatever, your stamina meter or whatever. It was I don't know. It didn't it's, it doesn't feel as fun as like seeing a heart piece like on the map and being like, "Oh, how can I get to that?" or like, you know, I, I don't Ooh. know. And and well, even when it got What marked, if there's an entire dungeon designed around getting it? Well, there actually are those in Echoes of Wisdom. So, oh, nice. Okay. So there is. No, what I think is really cool about Echoes of Wisdom, I guess we could jump just jump right into it now. I think it did a really good job of blending like the the stuff of like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom with the original like Legend of Zelda design. Like you you can very much see them both like working together. Like the like the save system for it, for instance, you know, works exactly like it did on Breath of the Wild, where you have like five different auto saves. And then you have like the save that you did. So like whenever you go to to load your game, it shows you all the different saves that are on there, which is what Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom did. So it's kind of cool to see that in there. Not to mention like it kind of has incorporated the whole like, you know, you figure out how to do it sort of thing where it's like, you know, here's here's a here's a puzzle, but you don't necessarily have to do it one way. Like there's kind of a lot of open endedness to it and all that. 100,000%. I mean, it, it really kind of you've got a game that. It looks like and feels like um, kind of Link's Awakening, frankly. Mm-hmm. You know, the gra- similar graphic style and world, you know, style and stuff. Uh, you, you, but you've got, you've got kind of the. It doesn't. It's not the crafting element from Tears of the Kingdom per se. But you've got like, hey, ha- how do I get up to this high ledge? Well, let's just stack four beds on top of each other, and that's how we get up there. Creativity. You know? Well, well, there's, Creativity, it, yeah, the, that's one way to do it. But you don't. But you don't necessarily have to do that. But yeah, there's a bunch of different ways to do things. And then encur- there's encouragement to think outside the box, and that's a strong common element between the two. Of them. I think that's what you're saying. Well, when, once we, you get once you get the sw- yes. the thwomp thing or the, or the boom, what, what was it called? It's basically a thwomp. But it's called like a boom pad or something like that. Uh, I use that for a lot of things because it raises; it'll go up and down. It's basically kind of like an elevator that you can that you can mm-hmm. put wherever. But it looks exactly like a Mario Thwomp, like a guy, you know, you know, like a guy, you know, you know what I mean. That would that would come down and you jump on it and then it would carry you up. It's like the same thing, but it's like the Zelda version of that. And <laughs> and co- traditional combat's very deprioritized. There's a mm-hmm. without giving away too much. There, you do get a mode where you can very briefly switch to kind of a link like thing and then swing your sword like link and all this stuff but it's uh it's on a very short timer and you have to build up a charge for it before you can do that and yeah and there is um there's like a blacksmith guy that you find that will help uh where you can like you you find these crystals that kind of look like tears of the kingdom looking crystals you know like the the boxes they kind of look like the same like sort of futuristic design or whatever Mm-hmm. And uh, you you get like ten of them, and you can like you can extend the amount of time that you can be the link spirit, or or you can make your like sword, uh, it's make your sword damage higher, or when you get and you'll get like more link abilities, you can also enhance that as well. Mm-hmm. But it's not as it's not it doesn't break the game as much as you think it would. Like when well, like when I first got the link ability, I'm like, all right, well now that I can turn into link, it'll make it a lot easier, and I can just turn into link and fight people. But but no, that's not true. I've actually died a few times like trying to just turn into link and fight somebody and they just destroyed me so i found this wolf character like on the map and i was like oh i'll just turn into link to do it and then i just kind of just walked up to the wolf to try to just knife him to death and he just like he just rolled me and killed me and another another thing that is reminiscent of breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom is it'll show you a mark on the map after you've died as to where you died at so you can go back there and try to like you know explore the area where you died, like that sort of thing. It'll give you the, the little X on the map. So if you're like, oh okay, where 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 did I go to? You know, you can go back and look that look that up. Do you lose anything when you die? Like that you have to go reclaim? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, you'll just start. I think you'll start back from. Well, you'll start back from whatever the last auto save was. Okay. But it does seem to auto save a lot. Like whenever you go into a different room, or and there's also these little like cactus things that you find. That have little like look like little cactuses with faces that you can activate. And the cool thing is, um, you, you know, in the older game, you'd have to like go up to this cactus and uh, interact with it, and then you could warp to a different cactus. But you can just warp to it whenever. You could just pull up the map and just go to any cactus that you've collected, Very which nice. uh, which I kind of like had to learn how to do that because I'm used to like Link to the Past, where you know you get the bird and you can only warp from certain areas or you you know you go to one thing and that'll take you to another thing there's, there's so many old school games that do don't that. forget the whirlpools but this one is like oh yeah mm-hmm. but this one is basically like you could just go once you have a warp you could just go there whenever you want no matter where you're at 
So that really helps. Well, and one other element of uh, the new school, the Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, that makes it into Echoes of Wisdom are things like like uh, heat resistance and cold resistance and lightning resistance. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. Uh, you get all these ingredients, you know, kind of like... It, well, in like Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, you, you cook at a fire, right? Well, this is... This is kind of, this kind of marries that with like the potions of the old Zeldas. It's yeah. the smoothie shop. You know, yeah, you throw yeah. these two ingredients together and get these different potions and stuff. And some of them will give you hearts. Some of them will give you the link bar refill. And then th they'll do things like... Um, give you res Yeah, give you resistances to different things or, or like a higher defense rate and stuff like that. And there's an... There's a, an, an uh, the uh, in, in Tears of the Kingdom, you have like the dubious food. Like if you mix bad things, you get the censored out yeah, I got dish, that right. Too, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. So they call it an unfortunate smoothie, and it's a censored out smoothie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you get nice. you still get the blurred the blurred icon and all that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's even scarier when it's pulverized like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mostly. What what what, what, what I noticed? Uh, I don't know if you ran into it as well, John, but. Uh, it was mostly when I mixtured things that are supposed to be enhancements. So, like, so you, you get, like, monster parts like you would in, in Tears of the Kingdom Breath of the Wild as well. But mm -hmm. uh, for, the only thing I could see so far you use them for is, like, with smoothies. So, like, you'll get, so you get, like, a monster horn or, like, a monster heart or, like, monster guts or whatever. If you, like, do, for me, if you, like, do, like, two guts together, two horns together, whatever, it, then it'll turn into an unfortunate smoothie where you should use, like, an actual, uh, you know, say like a cactus fruit or like a mango or whatever, and mix that with a horn, and that'll that'll work as a smoothie instead of, you know, you know what I mean. Or if you try to use like just salt and a horn, that does that will end up in an unfortunate thing. You have to have like an actual base to it, and then put the mm -hmm. other thing as an enhancement to it, and that's kind of how it seems to work mm -hmm. on the on the smoothie mm -hmm. front. But yeah, it's got this. It's got its own little mini game in there where it's like, oh, now that you know how to do it, come out, come up with ten different flavors. And then That's after cool. you do that, it's like come up with thirty different flavors, you know. And I haven't gotten past that yet, just because I can't carry enough in my inventory to get that high. But it's just a cool little extra thing, and it'll tell you like whether you mix two things together or not, and what you made from it, and that that helps also to help you like recreate specific potions and all that that you can use. And, and, and if you do crossover contact uh, or content with Weef, or yeah, with yeah, with uh, what am I forget Ring Fit. There we go. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, that was in there too. The smoothies, but you can all, but also if you buy like a potion from a from a like a from like a merchant or whatever, it doesn't go into your bottle. It actually shows up as a, as like a smoothie, like it takes up a spot of the smoothie. So you can buy a few, and you don't need to worry about having bottles. But you do still collect bottles, but bottles only carry uh, fairies that will bring you back to life if you die, like like that sort of thing. They exclusively work for fairies. Do you can you yeah. like water anything like that? No. For as far as I can tell, you you don't use the bottle that you'll. You'll just automatically collect a fairy if you find one. Did you get like a water-based summon? I think at some point. Uh, I mean, I have fish. Like, I mean, I have plenty of fish that I can summon or whatever. But, but also another thing that's kind of like Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom is, I've noticed, I've watched videos and I've seen like people have stuff that I don't have yet or stuff that I miss. You know, like some stuff. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you completely miss things. Like I saw on uh, NBC people talking about the trampoline, which I guess you get at the very beginning of the game. I totally missed it, and I didn't get it until I had already beaten, like, two dungeons. And I was like, oh, there it is. And then I came back, and it was, like, right there. I just didn't notice oh, nice. that you could you echo it, it, you know, like, yeah. And there's this other, like, spinning uh, spiky thing that apparently everybody has that I still don't have. Do you have one of those, John? Oh, uh, so I missed the trampoline, too. I didn't, I, yeah. I found out, I was... Yeah, I found out about the trampling just now when you mentioned it, but I, uh, I did. Yeah, I did. You're talking about like the things that run across the floor with the blades and stuff. I did get that. Yes. No, I, I do have the little one with the blades, but there was a big one that has spikes that spins, and I never got one of those, and I don't know where they are. Yeah. Okay. No, then I, I don't. You, you had a, you had a question earlier, uh, John Knitter, about the game. Sorry, we were kind of just gushing oh, yeah. about it, but no, this is one more thing that I noticed, which I don't think has been in a, a. In my, in my brief time watching you play it, uh, one thing I noticed that I don't think has been in a 2D Zelda game before is there's a quest log. Correct me if I'm wrong. We've never had a oh, quest yeah, log yeah. in a 2D Zelda game before, have we? And, and no. the quest log feels very familiar, like I said, to Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. That's what I think is kind of cool about this is, you know, we've had, myself included, you know, people being like, oh, you know, we miss we miss the old Zelda. We miss, like, the the full-on dungeons and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, how are they going to do that? I felt like this was a good answer to that, where it's like, well, we could do that, but we're still going to we're still going to bring in the stuff that we've already 
done with Zelda games and it'll still be a part of mm. it. If we were to if we were to kind of armchair oversimplify it, it's kind of Tot K light buried in Link's Awakening with uh, a very unique combat system. A summon okay. kind of a yeah. summon based combat system. Yeah, the combat system in itself, we I guess we haven't really talked about that. I've seen some people kind of be a little upset about that. I mean, just because of, you know, just because you kind of have to summon something and wait for it to do its thing, and some things attack uh, sooner or later than others. And I don't know. What do you think about that, uh, John? Are there, do you have any specific favorites yet? I definitely have a couple that I've used multiple times. Well, I, I find myself using, uh, I've got a level two uh, mummy. And that can take a lot of damage, so I okay. use that a lot. Uh, I also I have one of the little jellies, but it's a flame jelly, and so I use that thing a lot. It just sets thing on, sets things on fire. Yeah, I use that one as well. Well, you also mm -hmm. use it for. I mean, you also use it for puzzles as well, for for lighting torches and stuff like that. You can use the, you can use the, yes. the flaming choo choo. And also, you got to be careful though, because it can set you on fire and the old bed as well. Which I use the old bed all the time, of course. Mm. And and you can get. And I got a nicer bed later. I got a softer bed. And and one thing I think is really really fun is you can drop this bed at any time and you can sleep on it whenever you want to if if you want your hearts to come back mm -hmm. you can I, I just love the idea of sleeping in the middle of a dungeon just at any time mm -hmm. you know just being like well I only got one heart left so I'm just gonna like knock off a couple hours here and then, and then I'll be up with six hearts and I'll be good to go and, you know like uh, and it's kind of funny to do it when there's monsters around you still and you can <laughs> still just like lay down and fall asleep and hope they you like you. summon a bunch of guardians or like you know. Uh, mobs to protect you and then go to sleep. I guess. Well, I guess you could. Well, maybe. There's a know. limit to how many things you can summon at a time. Well, as of we'll get... yeah. Well, as of as of where we're at, like I, I'm like I said, I, I beat a couple dungeons. I was just headed towards the third dungeon, but but whenever you beat a dungeon, you find uh, basically friends of your little triway guy that you have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, the more friends that you find, that levels up your your abilities. So like the mm -hmm. first dungeon you beat you level up and you can summon more things. And then the second dungeon that I beat, you, you can't summon more things, but you can like, you can make them, you can summon them farther away from you. You can kind of like, I guess you don't have to drop it right in front of you or whatever, like that sort of thing. But yeah, no, I, I imagine eventually you'll be able to summon bigger things and maybe you can eventually summon bosses or whatever. I don't know. I've been trying not to, I haven't looked online for anything really. You know, I've been trying to figure everything out on my own and I've been having, nice. I've been having a lot of fun with it so far. And it, it does take some getting used to of like, you know, just dropping your own characters or trying to drop something that, and it it is kind of interesting, yeah, trying to drop the right echo that fits the right situation or whatever, right? Like I, I found this bird that like dives bo dive bombs from the air, and I, I've been using that one a lot because it can get most things. But also you have to deal with, you know, different creatures that move different ways. Like I, like I got a Poe where, where I defeated it. And I echoed it, and the Poe won't attack anybody. The The Poe will just run and leave fires behind it. So it wants you to follow it, but it won't actually go towards anything. So it's kind of useless unless somebody is actually aggressively chasing the Poe, and that's the only way it would hurt anything. So, so you have to kind of know like the way the characters were, will react. Uh, my my favorite so far has been the uh, the level two Borblin, the one the one with the with the with the club and the shield. Like I like that one a lot because it can defend itself. And it also attacks really quickly, so mm. I've been I've been using that one a lot. I got it in uh, I got it like in the sandstorm part of of Gerudo, like uh, where it's like kind of up above. It's it's like above the Gerudo village area or whatever. There's a couple uh, there's a couple little like uh forts there that you can where you can find them. But like I said, it's mm. also really easy to miss things. You know, you may just not even see that part or not. I only got there because I was lost. You know, when I was trying to find the actual like uh dungeon part so it's kind of cool i do like the freeness of it and you know you can jump on top of the trees you can climb you can you know climb up walls in your own way just by building staircases and stuff like that so it is very open-ended in that way and it's not really you know you, you still have uh they still give you like spots on the map to go towards but you can kind of find your own way to get there and that sort of thing which, which is fun have you yet encountered a situation where you wanted to make an echo of something but found out that you can't well, the way it works is after you beat, after after you beat a bad guy, you can learn their echo and then use it. So you, you can't do it proactively ahead of encountering this thing okay. for the first time. Yeah, we should, uh, also, yeah, it's better that way, I think. Yeah, because yeah. you have to. So if you meet a you meet a difficult boss or a difficult character that you want to use, yeah, you have to be able to defeat them first, and then you can echo them. 
So then mm-hmm. later when you run to, run into him again, you could throw one back at it or whatever, you know. Whatever. So how hard was it to defeat the bed? Well, well, oh, well, well. If if, they, if it's an inanimate <laughs> object, you can just okay. automatically clone it. And, and, but sure. li- but living things, you have to kill them before you can clone them. You can't you can't ind- indiscriminately uh, clone inanimate objects. You you encounter inanimate objects that have the, like a glow about them, and then okay. you can learn those. So there's kind of I mean I guess it kind of spoon feeds you that way. You know at least in the very beginning of the game. But I imagine as the game as we get and I can tell that Trey's further in the game than I am because he's talking about you know I, I'm in that second dungeon right now. He's gotten past it and is on his way is part way through the third dungeon. Uh, and I don't think I've put in, I don't think I put ten hours into it yet. I'd have to look. Maybe over the break I'll grab my switch and see what it says. I'm, I'm not I'm not quite to the third dungeon. I'm just heading towards that way. But oh, okay. I, but I beat I beat the second dungeon last night and uh, and I was just kind of fucking around, just just going from from place to place and all that. But okay, it was uh, yeah. But it's I, I've been yeah I've been enjoying it. I'm enjoying it just thus far. I think that I think the I really like the toyetic design of the characters and all that. I think they look really smooth. Uh, mm-hmm. The water looks really nice, you know, to look at and all that. Mm-hmm. I I like the music a lot, and 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 it kind of reminds me of Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening does this too, like the original Game Boy game, where it like it has like some notes of the original Zelda song. You know, it kind of thinks makes you think it's going to go to that, but then it goes a different way. And this yes. like main theme does the same thing, and I kind of love how it does it, where it goes, it does a couple notes that make you think what it's going to do, and then it goes a different way, and then it does a couple notes again that makes you think it's going to do another thing, and then it goes a completely another way. And I, I just I like that. I like the way it kind of fucks with your memories of the song and what you, you expect it to go to that original Zelda song, but it won't. It, it has its own unique theme and all that. And I, I think that's cool. You know, I, I like, I like the way it plays with you in that way. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. I like, I like that it, it plays with you like that. Uh, I also really like the, I just like the music in general. Uh, now, have you, have you run in, run across anything that is like, very transparently from a previous Zelda game, like a landmark. If you go to the top of the Gerudo Desert, you can see like this big stone head and two smaller stone heads on either side of it. And that, I can't remember if it's the light world in the, de- no, it is the light world in the desert uh, in Link to the Past. Hmm. That's the, that's the desert palace. Yeah. It, it, there, you, you will run into a lot of things that will remind you of Link to the Past, uh, but I don't think it's, necessarily the same because i think what was in the story they said that everything's been sucked into the rift or whatever and it's all been kind of spewed out differently so it's like supposed to be from different worlds because it and also we have to remember this is an entirely new timeline now remember the timeline (laughs) oh well remember it's on all new timeline (laughs) new timeline sure zelda can have her own game but it's its own timeline it doesn't count right well (laughs) i'm 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 sorry. I, I'm glad you mentioned the Zelda oh, oh, gets ahead. her own game. You know, there's all this talk about. Um, there's all this talk about. Hey, this is the first Zelda game where you play as Zelda, and then here I am with right. Zelda: The Wand of Gamelon on the CDI. And you do have it. Yeah, you showed it, it to me when I was there. That's like the Fox. The Fox movies of. You the better be careful. Nintendo's gonna. Yeah. Jimmy Hoffa, you showing that off on the internet? Well, I mean, I, I thought you were going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought you were going to talk about the Hyrule Warriors games, where you've been able to play as Zelda many a times in there. Oh That's yes, saying. yes, of course. And of not course. to mention, no, I, what, what was it? The uh, Smish Brothers. The uh, the the links. Of, what was it? The Legend of Zelda. Um, Spirit Tracks. Uh, well, no, what's it called? Um, the fucking dancing game, <laughs> where, where you, the version of that, the Crypt of the Necro Dancer, Legend of Zelda game, oh, where you can yeah. play as uh-huh, you can uh-huh. play as Zelda in that too. Wand of Hyrule or some shit. I'm just saying, there's other games where you've played as Zelda. I mean, that wasn't a spe- that wasn't a Nintendo made one, but she was available in there. I understand what they're saying. They're saying, "Hey, this is the first mainstream canonical, you know, not uh, canonical." <laughs> oh, well, okay, it's a new, <laughs> new it's, it's, I know, it's I know. New, I know. It's a new timeline. Cadence of Hyrule. That's what I was trying to find. That one. Cadence of mm, Hyrule. Yeah, she's available. Yeah. She's a, no. I realize canonical. She, she's playable in that game too. But no, it's interesting that they say that it's non-canonical because there is actual stuff. And this is kind of a spoiler. I saw it in a review. I haven't gotten here yet. But they do kind of they do kind of like a um, touch on stuff like you know why do the Zoras look so different in a Link to the Past versus like Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time? Like they do actually do that where they have where they explain to you why you have the kind of the monster looking Zoras that you saw on the Super Nintendo one and the more like, you know, sexy angelic looking ones that you see in like uh, Ocarina of Time. So they are kind of referencing 
the differences of characters and all that. So, I mean, I don't know how it can be non-canon, but still have, I mean, it, it kind of, it, it, like I said, it, it bring, going back to Hyrule Warriors, it does kind of remind me of that sort of feeling where Hyrule Warriors took like all the different Zelda timelines and the original one, the first, the, the Wii U one, and, and, you know, brought them all into one universe. And that kind of seems like that's what this is saying that it's doing as well with the Rift, where everything's getting pulled into the Rift and then spewed, spewed back out in different ways. Like there was another thing in, in Gerudo Desert where you go into the rift and you see like the where you would enter like the where you would have gone into the dungeon on a link to the past, but it's only in the rift world. It's not in the outside world or whatever. So it's like so there so you will you will recognize places in there from a Link to the Past, but I don't think the map feels similar at all. Or at least doesn't feel as similar as like a link between worlds did or anything like that. I don't think. But yeah, it's been uh I don't know, it's been a lot of fun to, to play around with. And I'm gonna. I'm planning on. I'm planning on. You know, I mean, at least beating it. I like to hundred percent it because it's. Yeah, it's fun to fuck around with, and I'm happy to see another another two D Zelda. So does it come across as maybe a little more lighthearted than like Breath of the Wild? Yeah, it's kind of like. Uh... I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's too easy. Originally, I thought it was too easy in the first dungeon, but I've died plenty of times. So. Oh it, yeah, no. It, I, it can easily I've get away from you when you're like, "Oh no, I'm great," and then you're dead in a couple seconds. It's, it's get, get a bunch of smoothies. You'll need them. I yeah, used a right, lot right. in the second dungeon. Right. No, it's it's not easy. It's not like it's not like. Tears of the Kingdom for kids in terms of difficulty level, but it does have something of a Tears of the Kingdom for kids feel in terms of its level of complexity. You're, it's a, the feel of the complexity as you're doing it. You know what I mean? It feels mm-hmm. kind of like, like a yeah, it, like I said, a simplified, a simplified Tears of the Kingdom kind of yeah. I haven't seen anyone like posit this, but it's just one of my little crackpot theories I came up with myself. But if you remember, shortly after Breath of the Wild was released, they said that internally to like show off some concepts, they had like made like an eight bit version of it. Mm-hmm. You think maybe? St- well, does anybody, including listeners, think maybe some of those elements were carried over to this? Even though it's not it was truly a two D game, I know that it has like a three D element to it. But it seems like maybe they didn't throw out their prototype; they just kept yeah. working on it and it developed into this. Possibly. I mean, yeah, it also we also awesome. did find out recently that it was supposed to be like a dungeon maker. Yeah, yeah. From, yeah true. from what I heard about that, yeah, they originally were. Well, I guess the idea of it, like I guess the idea of the echoes and all that, came from the idea of dungeon making, where you would, the yeah, Zelda where, maker, where yep. you would be able to, well, where you would be able to take a thing and copy it and put it wherever you want, and that's where, the, and that's where they were kind of like, oh, oh, well, that's a cool idea. Let's make that. In, or at least, I guess I, Ionuma was uh, thinking about that in his head about making it a different thing. Well, in, in the Link's Awakening remake, there was a dungeon yeah, making yeah. section, sure. you know. So maybe they just jumped off of that and yep, wound up here. I'm I'm really happy it's not a. I know you love Mario Maker, but I'm happy that it's not a, a Zelda Maker. If they want to do that, let's do. I mean, I'm glad. Let's get back they, to two they screens. Could, they could still. We do they could, maker. Well, I mean, they could still do that. I'm just happy that there's a single player one. They, sh- you know, you should have both, not just one or the other. Both. Like, yep. I would rather have. For me, I'd rather have a single player experience than a user created experience. So I I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. So I mean, I would rather see this first, and if they still want to do that, you know, cool. But if they, but if all we were getting was the the Zelda Maker, I would have preferred what we ended up having now. You know, and I guess they were originally thinking about putting Link in there, but the the sword and the shield like got in the way, so that's why they're like, we got to get rid of it. And now Numa nope. was like, well, let's make it Zelda story, and and here we are. Well, I mean, hopefully they they will continue on with the maker ideas. I mean, if only people had like a way to get a second screen, you know, if only we had another screen that we could connect to the switch. I mean, that's not absolutely not possible, you know. But forget that, you know. <laughs> you, mean, you mean like your phone? <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, what? Everybody's already got a second screen. Oh, tell Nintendo. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to play. I stuff. had one question, Trey. And I don't. I don't want to play. Forgive stuff me if you did mention it and I missed it, but have you looked at this game on your? Have you tried it portable on your uh, OLED? Like, how does it it's look? It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, it's gorgeous on the OLED. I, yeah. you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't played it. I haven't played it out of the dock. I guess the one thing that I did do, uh, John was there. Um, mm. I pulled it out of the dock just so I could scan some amiibo with it because you can scan amiibo, and we yeah. just kind of fucked yeah, around with that. that. Once amiibo well, was available. You got I, like some turkey or something. I just got items that I could use to make smoothies. And you can only scan three amiibos a day, but all of them work no matter what they are. So 
You you basically get random items that you can use to create smoothies with. Do they have to be three different amiibo? Um, I don't know. I didn't try scanning the same one. I just wanted to scan as many different ones as I could. But yeah, we scanned three, and it's like, that's it. That's all you can do, and I haven't scanned any ever since then. It was also doing a really weird thing where it wouldn't read the it wouldn't read the uh, Joy Cons while they're on there. I had to like pop one of them off and then like scan it and then put it back on, and it was stupid. It's annoying. But that's why I don't scan Amiibo because I can't. You know, I I use uh, the eight bit dough controllers and you can't scan them on there, and I don't want to pop my switch off whenever I want to scan an Amiibo or whatever. So. Yeah, I was gonna say, can't the pro controllers scan amiibos? They can, but, using they can, but I don't have the pro controller. I we sent, don't use I, those. I sent it to Jeremy. Oh, that's right, you sent me yours. <laughs> that's which I think I, I think it's in a plastic bag somewhere, it's stored back behind me. Oh, is it broken? Because I sent it's it. It's not to broken. You. I just packed uh. it away because I was using exclusively using the one with the Hall Effect joysticks. Oh, oh, what the the Wiener Dog one? Or no, the where are the eight bit dough? The newest eight bit dough that I have. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's not the. Uh, it's not, the, not it's not the Oscar Mayer Wiener controller that we both bought. No, that doesn't even have sticks, does it? Oh, wait, yeah, it does. No, it does, definitely it does but it's, it's not very... It's not very They're of, like <clears throat> relish effect. I really need to start getting into 8-bit dough. I, I think the only 8-bit dough th- uh, thing I have is the Famicom keyboard. Oh, you got that? Uh, That's cool. That's yeah, well, my brother got it for me for Christmas, and uh, it's I love the keys on it. I mean... You know, I have a mechanical keyboard down here, and it's got the LED lighting and everything. It sounds really rad, right? You know, yeah. but mm-hmm. uh, nothing. I've never used a keyboard that feels better, the key, where the keys feel better than that eight bit dough one. My only gripe about it is it doesn't have a tin. Is it mechanical as well? It's mechanical. Yeah. Okay. It's, well, and I'm no expert on mechanical. I, my understanding is the big brand for mechanical keys is Cherry. So like Cherry MX Blue, MX Brown, MX Red, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is using some other brand. So, but my understanding is the the keys in this are that brand's equivalent to the Cherry Blue, Cherry MX Blue, which is like okay. the best one for like real typing. You know, like right. Red's best for gaming. Brown is like a balance between Blue and Red. And then Blue huh. is like, if you're not going to do a lot of gaming, but you're going to do a lot of typing, Blue is where it's at. So, huh. Maybe yeah. someday they'll invent a keyboard that the touches of them change with settings. Mm, that's an interesting thought, isn't it? Haptics. Haptics. I think I went through all my notes that I had on Echoes of Wisdom. Is there anything else you wanted to say about it aside from my Would I mean, you say it's a must buy for fans of Zelda? Yes. Of course. No, I, yes. I think I think it's a great game. And I, I do I like it a lot and I'm planning on playing it all the way through. Is it better than the um Link, or rather, the uh, Link's Awakening remake. It's like I said. It's it, it take a bed of Link's Awakening remake, mm-hmm. and add s- a simplified version of Tot K two over top of it, okay. plus a, a new combat mechanic that's summoning based, and then you yeah. have echoes. Probably make it a lot larger too. I think it's a couple times larger than Link's Awakening. Yeah. Well, I, the file size is like three times as big. I don't know about the world. I think the map is. Big. I think I mean, the map. I think looks, I the map read looks the larger. The map was like eight times the size or something. Oh, okay. The, okay. the map looks larger, and it's. And Do you it's have any be, option I mean, to change your three dimensional perspective from the overworld, or is it always from a constant? So view? far as I know, it's over, only the one view. The There's no items that style. put you in a first person view or anything like that. Not to the best of my knowledge. No, okay. not that I've gotten. Or anything like that. It's all it's all overhead, but I like uh, I like it in that way. But yeah, um, I'll, I'll tell you, moving around the map is a lot less cumbersome. That's for sure than uh, that's than, than Link's Awakening. So mm-hmm. I didn't really I I wasn't a huge fan of Link's Awakening remake, but that's only because I'm not a huge fan of Link's Awakening the Game Boy game, just because I think the the overworld traversal is incredibly annoying. But that's that's just me. But I, 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 like, I, yeah. I like it better than that one. I know it's a product of its time, and that's. Why I feel like they if you would have bought it in the United it. States, you would like it more. But you just like <laughs> casting aspersions on it. No, I liked. I mean, I liked it plenty when I bought it in uh, in 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 the whatever in Great Britain or whatever. I just uh, yeah, you just were like, eh, Link's too Cockney for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, my my problem was I played a Link. What's to the, the obsession past? with eggs in a dish? My my problem was that I played Link to the Past first, and nothing really could hold a candle to that. I was like, oh, this is just a shitty version of A Link to the Past. Okay, I get it. No. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, no, I, I highly recommend it to both of you. Um, I think you should definitely play it if you can. I'm pretty certain I'm going to buy it tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, do it. Do it. it. Look, if I were... Okay, the only criticism I would levy against it is uh, it suffers from a lot of uh, performance, you know, a lot of frame stutters and stuff like that. It can draw... 
dragged down really bad. But but yeah. uh, when <clears throat> when you're really in the thick of it, you tend to not notice that as much, or at least I don't. I mean, I, I haven't really noticed it, but I'm not really. I'm not really much of a frame frame person or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard I heard it was I heard game. that it wasn't that the framing wasn't great, but also Breath of the Wild had really bad frames too when it came out. Mm. But I mean that was kind of more noticeable, I guess, because it would hinder uh, combat. And we you know before it was patched, but but no, it, it it really hasn't bothered me. I think it looks fine for what it is. But uh, yeah, it it wasn't like it it wasn't like you know going down to. Like you know, picture by picture, or anything like that. It wasn't becoming a slideshow, mm. but you could mm. kind of notice that it was chugging a little bit. But it wasn't like I don't know. It wasn't bothering me. But yeah, it's a it's a lot of fun. Get yourself a Club Borblin level two. That's the one that I liked. Try saying that ten times fast. I, I liked the sm- the spear Moblin before that. I was calling him Moby and I was cheering him on. I was like, "Go get him, Moby!" Nice. But mm-hmm. uh, he's all about animal rights. Yeah, he's less of an asshole, and he has more hair than than the other one. But uh. Yeah, no, it, and then once I got the Borblin, uh, the Borblin was great because he can block. They can block with the with the shield and whatnot. But yeah, we spent about thirty minutes on Echoes of Wisdom. We can move on. Is there anything else that you've been playing that you wanted to talk about, John Des Moines, John? Um, you know, i I've been I've been on a phase where I've been doing less gaming in general. You know, so I'll I'll occasionally drop in on the Steam Deck for a little bit of gaming or or on the Switch. Um, you know, I, but nothing really remarkable, nothing, nothing of real substance because I've either been working on the podcast or I've been, you know, spending quality time with, with Jody and, and Wyatt in August. We, we've been sitting in front of a TV a lot more without a controller, if that makes sense. You know, I, we, um, over the past, over the course of the like past six months, we've watched the entire run of Young Sheldon of Big Bang Theory. Oh no. Uh, I, I've seen <laughs> no, I love, I, I, I love, I love it. Uh, Sheldon's the opti- okay. uh, the autistic pope. Uh, but anyway, um, mm. <clears throat> I've seen for all mankind already. Uh, August and I have seen for all mankind already. But now we're watching it with Jody, and so we're working our way through for all mankind again, which is an amazing oh, that's cool. show. Oh, it's amazing. What's that? It's an Apple Plus TV show. It's a. Oh, yeah. It's a. It's it's about. It. Well, it's <laughs> about um, it's about the space program, but it's a, an alternate history. Uh, you know. Um, is it not it's based just, upon like? Since I'm hearing since it's for all mankind, is it not based off of like uh, industrial revolution in a wartime or whatever? Industrial, re- uh, industrial revolution. No, well, it's well because like I, it wasn't the industrial revolution during like World War One where or whatever where like they were trying to like outdo the technology of everybody else and that kind of like push technology forward. And wasn't that isn't that kind of what happened with space where we were just trying to like well the Soviets or whatever were trying to get quicker. We we're trying to do better things as a country because it was almost it was a different kind of war, but it was a war. Yeah, it's a space yeah, race. Technology. It's a space race, and and this this show is centers very much around the space race, but it's amazing how much ground they cover, you know. And and uh, the thing, like I'm I'm trying to think of examples that aren't spoilery, you know. Like I can tell you, the first four minutes, history is completely changed, right? You know, um, yeah. but but uh, and it's done such a way that you don't see it coming. It's the first four minutes of episode one are just like masterwork, but yeah. like examples, examples um, uh, in this alternate history, John Lennon is not assassinated, but Pope John Paul is, you know, just little things like that. Yeah. You know, the world is just little changes where the world is different. Uh, technology is a little further ahead. What was that in the nineties? What was that? Uh, that tablet that, or that kind of tablet thing that Apple was working on where you could do video calls. Was they had the a Pippen? prototype. Well, no, the Pippin was the video game system. Pippin was the video game. Was, oh, yeah, the Newton. The new, yeah, the Newton. So the Newton actually happens in this timeline, and that's how they're commu- they, There's a lot of people well, cool. video calling with each other on this Newton thing. So is it a little reminiscent of Man in the High Castle, like another alternate history type thing? Well, I've never seen that show, but that was based the on World what War I know II. about well, it. Well, Man, yes. of, yeah, Man in the High Castle was like that. Was like what if what if that was what Hitler, if Germany what won if, the what war? If Hitler yeah. won. Yeah, I watched that. That yeah. was a Philip K. Dick thing or, yeah it was cool Phil K. Dick book i mean i watched the first season i never watched anything after that but that I mean is this one still like the cold war and all that is it still like uh mm-hmm. america versus mm-hmm. russia and who gets the space first and all that fun stuff? yes very much very much and there's a lot of interplay there's so much drama in this show there's there's comedy in the show i mean you know um uh, august august independently is watching their way through 
ER, the old 90s TV show ER. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so imagine that level of drama, comedy, nuanced complexity, but it's an alternate history of the space race. But, you know, season one is like 69 through 74, season two is like 81 through 83. And then the season three is the 90s, and then season four is the, the aughts, and there's a season five in the works, and so on and so forth. So this is supposed to eventually catch up with modern times? Presumably, yeah. Will it go past past modern times, like like Star Trek Discovery, where it started in, like, the, uh, in, the, in the original series and it ended up in the, the Game in of the Thrones future. show versus the books? I hope so. I hope the sh I, I hope it goes on that long so they can, they can get ahead of real life, you know, and then we can see some, some of their visions for the future, yeah. They just like, to... they all switch to the Simpsons after it passes. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to guess that it being an alternate history of the space program, you know, and having seen nothing of the show, just just to guess that uh, the central thrust or some uh, the, the message might be along the lines of we could do, we could do more. Like I don't know that's 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 a feeling that I've felt for a long time. I think a lot of people who are into space have felt for a long time. It's like we went to the moon fifty fucking years ago, and why don't we have like a colony on the moon right oh, now? Yeah, like, what, what no, happened? You know what I mean? I mean that, that's because there's, they, that's because there's no funding for it. That's because yeah, they'd rather yeah. do other things. So is it, is the like, show kind of like, like just make rich people like, richer? It's really yeah. dusty up there. Yeah, but there, yeah, there's not really any funding for NASA and ex space exploration. Nobody cares about that when they can just right. You know, just reign over the people who live here. So, yeah. John, you nodded your head yes. Yeah. Right. So, well, so um, you know, there's a moon base. There's a like a full fledged moon base uh, in 1981 in this timeline, right? They're, okay. They they've made it to Mars by like 1995 in this timeline, or 94 rather, Mars 94. You know, there's this three way race between the Soviets, NASA, and a private, an American private uh, company. All three are en route to the to Mars at the exact same time. So, well, my interest has peaked. Yeah, well, and, and one other thing is I just mentioned Mars 94 and the Soviets are involved. So what didn't happen in 1989 in this timeline? Berlin Wall mm. falling. Right, yeah. And the 99 Red Balloon song never came out. <laughs> right. Well, no, no, actually, I think that song actually is used incidentally in the show. But... Okay. But it's written for a different purpose or something. Must it's be. actually about a sale at Kmart. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Which is now the red light special. The red balloon special. <laughs> <laughs> I love alternate history stuff. It, it's fun. Yeah, right. Because it's it's the interplay between real history and fake history, and it it there's there's nuggets of both just interplaying with each other, right? Because there are things that happen in this alternate history that are one hundred percent the same as real history. I just want to know if, like, instead of like the dude who assaulted or the dude who killed Pope. Francis was like had a copy of like Franny and Zoe in his pocket or some other Salinger book. Huh. Uh, it, it, it doesn't go into that particular detail, but there are so many things that I could spoil that I won't. It's just, it, it, but the show never, the show never lets you down. It just, every episode is just like this big power bomb of stuff. So yes, John, you have to check it out. All right. I'll say yes. Next time I'm offered a free month of Apple TV plus. <laughs> I still got those six months, I think. I don't know. I don't know where the receipt is. I think I might have a free trial as well since I have an, a new iPhone. But the last, uh, yeah, the last TV that I bought came with like six months of Apple TV for free, and I never started it because there's nothing I really cared about watching on there. <laughs> so I just bought I, tickets from Ticketmaster over the weekend, and they offered me Apple TV Plus again. I was like, no, I've, I've already seen Severance. Seven season two is not out yet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I watched yeah. this for. Yeah, that's the only thing yeah. I'm waiting for, too. Wasn't there another show that everyone thought was cool? It was like some dude's name. Oh, oh uh, Ted Lasso. Oh, yeah. Ted Lasso. Yeah, Ted yep. Lasso. Yeah, I guess I didn't see that show either. I haven't seen it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's uh, apparently, uh, I think people compared the bear to it. Weirdly enough. But uh, yeah, if we can move on from there, I can talk about, I have like one more thing and then we could take a break and talk about okay. whatever else. Uh, the other big thing I haven't, you know, I haven't had a whole lot of time to play games because, you know, John and I, we were in, we were in Champagne for the weekend for the wedding and all that stuff. Jeremy was also doing something. Yeah. Jeremy was also getting, <laughs> getting married. That's why you weren't here last week and all that. And I guess we, we did get one response to our question from last week that I read before I forget. Uh, I, I, last week I asked everybody what their top five uh, most played games were so far of the year. 
And uh, Hutch, Hutch always gets like right under the radar, like right after we recorded. I always get a, re- a response. But but Hutch said, uh, number one, Stellar Blade. Number two, Final Fantasy sixteen. Number three, st- th- Trails Through Daybreak. Number four, Lords of Exile. And number five, Shin Megami Tensei Five: Vengeance. And also, really, Final Fantasy sixteen. Yeah, and also a uh, bonus level. Next surgery is nine thirty, which that was last week, and I believe you made it through it. So. Hopefully you're feeling better now. I mean, yeah, and getting your recovery time with multiple games. They also made it through games, uh, so not... that other game, Lucky Square. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which... Uh, yeah. Probably while he was out for the surgery, for all we know. Right. But uh, the other thing that I've been playing is uh, F-099, because as I said at the very top of the show, uh, Nintendo seems to care about F-0 again for now. But uh, F zero ninety nine. It's actually the one year anniversary of F zero ninety nine. Oh so, dang! So uh, I, I saw on, on Slack yesterday while I was while I was working. Uh, I noticed Jeremy posted uh, that they had updated the F zero ninety nine. I haven't played F zero ninety nine anymore. But uh, looking into it more, basically what they did is they up zero they they updated F zero ninety nine with the Satellaview F zero. So. You know, for anybody who always wanted to know what Satellaview F Zero was, they added those levels to F Zero ninety nine. Yeah, just is... took your phone line to your internet and off you go. Uh, well, I mean, it's already connected to the internet because you have to download it from the internet. F Zero ninety nine is an internet game. Internet already exists. But you know, the Satellaview game that everybody everybody claimed that nobody played, but I played a million times because I played it on a ROM in the nineties. It was the exact same thing. But yeah, no, I played this game, and I, that's how I knew what it was. I was like, oh wait. That's the that's the Satellaview game, or as I always knew it knew it as F Zero Two, because that was how I downloaded it as a ROM on the on whatever uh, emulator that I had back in 1998. But uh, yeah, but you can play it now, and uh, they they've added a bunch of shit to it. Uh, so there's so there's a whole new cup. It's called Ace League, and it has five high, five uh, races on it, and it's hard as fuck. Uh, I played it last night. I did not make it all the way through. And every for every race that I made it through, I was at the very very end of the amount. So it's like have to play sixty fifth to pass, and I made like sixty fourth. And the next one was like have to pace like have to place like fifty ninth, and I made it like fifty seventh. Like I barely made it in, and on the third one I got knocked out. But uh, if you if you happen to be uh, good enough and make it all the way through the Ace League, you can actually unlock the machines even from the original Satellaview F Zero. So that's pretty fucking rad. And they even have uh, different abilities. Like the way they race is completely different than the normal original original cart. So they've actually put new racers in there even, which is awesome. Now there's, now there's emotes. You know, you can annoy people with emotes if you want. But you can like, uh, you can you can equip it to where like when you KO somebody, it shows an emote of like, of like, uh, you know, Captain Falcon drink, drinking a tea or giving a thumbs up or whatever. You can put two different stuff like that. And it, it's all based around the, the original four characters and all that, but it's pretty cool. And now when you start the game, you see like little emotes like coming out of the out of, out of the race cars, like as it's pulling through. Did, did you ever play F-099 at all, uh, John Wedgworth? I did. I did. I thought, I thought it was really cool. I thought I'm going to spend a crap or a shit ton of time on this and then have not picked it up again really lately. So no. now that I know there's a big update, maybe I'll have to go back to it. You should. It's a, uh, it's, I mean, it's my, it's definitely my favorite game of the, of the 99 games. 100%. I like that they care about it. That's special. Yeah. And, and F zero F zero on super Nintendo is one of my favorite games of all time. So it's a, uh, it kind of blew my mind to see like a game that I care so much about that. I felt like everybody had completely forgotten about all of a sudden get so much love in this, uh, in this beautiful ninety nine person online those alternate uh, multiplayer thing, yeah, live in that one. And so. it, and I well, I, I mean, a big reason that I loved F Zero uh, on Super Nintendo originally was because of the soundtrack. Like I love the soundtrack so mm. much, and I love the way so it looks. Amazing. Like uh, I will say forever, I like I like F Zero so much better than Super Mario Kart for Super Nintendo. I have never even owned the Super Mario Kart on Super Nintendo because uh, the only one I had was F Zero because I didn't like the other one because it. You had the split screen, and it was really slow, and I, I don't know. I didn't like the way it controlled. But F Zero was was my favorite racing game for years. The original. Yeah. One. Other than the multiplayer capability of Mario Kart, Mario Kart was kind of F Zero for children. It it was just slow, and I didn't like that you didn't get the full, the full screen, and I, it just yeah, I didn't like the way it controlled. It was F Zero battle mode, and then yeah. they added its own battle mode to the battle mode. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't until like '64, which when I when I got more into Mario Kart. But I never I never liked the Super Nintendo one. 
Well, that said, I love Super Nintendo Mario Kart. I love it. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. The F-Zero was a much more powerful presentation, you know, much more vis visually appealing. It was faster. It was the future. The soundtrack on it was, I mean, the soundtrack on Super Mario Kart's great, but the soundtrack on F-Zero is, is phenomenal. I, you know, I think of one of my I favorite mean, soundtracks of, of all time. <laughs> it's really good. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's really cool that they've done all this stuff with F-Zero 99, uh, like I said, go back and play it. Uh, I didn't know how well I was doing, and I, I'm I, I was I'm on A plus status. I didn't know I got that high. I'm like mid A plus is where is where my stats are on there. And uh, yeah, I played it for a while. I played some of the extra levels, and they, they've like they've done some little tweaks where like now it'll show you where your level is, like where your grade is, you know, and where you're at on on the main screen. It didn't used to do that, and now you can unlock specific like a uh, year anniversary like extra little. Uh, little stuff for your for your profile and all that you know that you can do for the next next like month or so but i think it's really rad that they added the uh satella few tracks on there which are really hard so if you want to if you want to go play them they're hard as fuck it's for for the real for the real racers out there but on top of that like an hour later they announced that they're bringing in the other two f-zero games that are available GBA. for what we have what we have available on nintendo switch online so, yeah. so they're bringing in a F Zero GP Legend, and most importantly, F Zero Climax, which was only made, which was only released in Japan, and that was the actual final F Zero game that was released before F Zero Ninety Nine. So that's pretty awesome. I had actually played F Zero Climax through my Delta emulator on my phone, just because I really wanted to play it because it was Japan only. But I'm really happy to play it on my Switch, and it'll be out. It'll be out next week. This last year, like somebody at Nintendo was going through a file cabinet and opened the file marked F Zero, like oh there, just did it off. Oh yeah, we forgot about these games. It's there very different than the file that says Pal World. <laughs> 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 yeah, old, old Pal World. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've heard all sorts of fun people say shit about Pal World. I saw that it was it was released on on PS Five or whatever for thirty bucks, like during the state of play and. They're actually not releasing it in Japan uh, for whatever reason. You can only get it here uh, through a PS5 or whatnot. But yeah, you I don't know. know. I, I thought that game looked like shite when I when I originally saw it. So I have I, I never have I, I had no interest in playing it. Look, it just looked like another fucking Minecraft game with it, with, with Pokemon that can might might be able to shoot guns about three about thirty hours into it. Who wants uh, to play it for that long? Well, I haven't I haven't played it, but I you know, I've made the distinction before. Maybe this is an artificial distinction, but the the Nintendo that makes content and culture and experiences and then the litigious legal arm of Nintendo. I I I, I the former the former I hope lives forever and finds success. Mm -hmm. For the latter, I hope that garbage kaiju falls back into the ocean mortally wounded and we never see or hear from them again. I hope they I hope I hope they not only fail but fail so spectacularly they end up with the explosive diarrhea they deserve. Are you talking about Power World? No, I'm talking about the legal arm of Nintendo. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean well I mean Power Power World they're not really trying like their their characters really look exactly look like Pokemon like characters, yeah. so they're not really trying to disguise them. It's not like and there's but they're a whole, trying to there's a whole bunch but, of Pokemon like games on Switch already, but they're not I don't know what it but Nintendo's not going after them for the designs of the characters, though they're, they're trying mechanics. to go after them for yeah. mechanics mm -hmm. and patents and things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think you know you you could make some argument that it's a parody, you know, based on the designs, whatever. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think we'll be successful. You know, these Pal World guys are an indie developer. This is their first game, as I understand it, and the only cash they've had is is from this game, and so. Big, huge, uh, monstrous Nintendo comes in, threatens them. I mean, it's like participate, or, or uh, there goes your company. Well, I um, I don't have any feelings one way or the other for Pal World, but for the sake of precedent, I hope that Pal World wins. Sure, I mean they're owned by Sony now, so they got some. They're not owned by Sony. They just they're... partnered with Sony for. Uh... Or they got yeah. Basically, it's like uh, or they're getting uh, distribution whatever. rights. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Sony, Sony did something for them. But anyway, uh, yeah. Enough about Power World. Let's talk about more uh, positive things like F Zero. No, I, th I think basically what happened with F Zero is you know there is like a good amount of F Zero fans that have been complaining for years, 
asking, begging for new F Zero stuff. You know, we got a little hint of it in uh, DLC and 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 Mario Kart Eight, but I think it just eventually they were just like, hey, why don't we just do an F Zero thing and see where it goes? You know, and then we got F Zero ninety nine. And obviously, with 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 the Nintendo Switch Online of re releasing of games, you know, we have all those. I mean, F Zero, you know, they they had already re released F Zero on, on Super Nintendo and F Zero on sixty four. Those already existed on Wii and Wii U, and you know, like in all these different uh, systems in the past through Virtual Console. I just felt like they were like, hey, uh, why don't we just, um, you know, why don't we give them some, give the F Zero fans something and just uh, see where it goes. And uh, yeah, with the Game Boy Advance stuff, you can bring all the other ones on here. You know, and hopefully eventually we'll get a new F Zero game, or maybe a re release of GX on the next for Switch Two or whatever. I was just gonna say, how rad would that be if there's like the surprise, all new F Zero specifically for Switch Two as like a launch Launch title? Yeah, I mean, all signs point to something like that happening. It would be, I mean, it'd be like the it'd be like the Metroid Prime Four thing, right? Where Maybe if they're gonna do if they're gonna do like a new F Zero, maybe they should put it on a system that already has a whole bunch of owners of it. You know, it'd probably do better for F Zero if it was a Switch One game and not a Switch Two game. But I don't know. With all the love for the F Zero ninety nine uh, anniversary and the bringing all the other F Zero games out, aside from the GameCube one, uh, cool. It, it gives me hope for for more F Zero stuff in the future. So here's hoping for that. But yeah, aside from that, I think. Uh, I think I'm good uh, for for what I uh, yeah for what I've been playing. So we can take a break and come back and talk about break. other things and anniversaries and whatever. Sounds good. Welcome. Hey, you. It's me, Mario. Yeah, you. <laughs> Subscribe to our Patreon to hear our bonus shows, which happen every month. I'm a tired. Tired of all the big corporate podcasts spoon-feeding you the same old video game news on every single show. Ah, spaghetti. Ah, ravioli. Then expand! Wow! With Nintendo Main Expansion Pack. It's us talking about old games that were important to us. It's us interviewing people that we meet at conventions. And heck, it's live shows from those same conventions. It's basically everything you could want that Nintendo Main ever made. Here we go! And it's just a buck a month. That's less than a bad indie on the eShop. It's $12 a year, which is less than Nintendo Switch Online. <laughs> Thank you so much for subscribing to our Patreon and supporting Nintendo Domain. Just go to patreon.com slash Nintendo Main Podcast and... Hey, Mario, let go! Whoa! 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 He's throwing us back to the show! So long, gay Bowser! Ah! Ah! Patreon.com slash Nintendo Main Podcast! Game over!
right, we're back from the break. Uh, let's talk about everything else that everybody else has been doing. Those people being Jeremy and John. I've been doing nothing else. So someone else had a very big something going on this week. You, you, you played a little bit of, of Mr. Gimmick to it at our house. I saw you. I did play. Yeah, but on eventful. Not, not yeah. <laughs> worth mentioning. I mean, one thing's kind of important that you got going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Birthday. It's your birthday. That's true. It is my birthday today. It's John's. Happy birthday, John. It's John's. So are we going to sing happy birthday to him and be all like in three different keys? No. Uh, well, <laughs> four now, different languages. Now I got to hear it. You no. brought it up. Now I got to hear no. it. I think it'd be okay. more about the delay that would ruin it. We're, we're oh, gonna, no, that might make it more fun. Yeah, isn't like happy birthday owned by somebody? We're going to get pulled from the airways. So no, no singing no sing here. <laughs> it's a copyright thing. But yeah, happy birthday. Uh, happy birthday, John. Thank you. Yeah, I'd... Uh, I sent you I sent you a card an eShop card because you can't get digital ones on Amazon anymore but I was That's able true. to I send one I was able to send one like overnight or whatever so it was there so I was I could send one physical That's awesome. so I was like hey but yeah I wanted yeah. to um I just wanted to send you some money for uh just so you can get Yakuza Kiwami whenever it comes out because I did. So that is a must 20, buy a, in my opinion You sent me a $35 card and uh Yakuza is $20 so that leaves me with 15 and I spent it already today. Um, you spent the 15 extra? You I mean? spent the 15 yeah. extra today, yes. Yeah. Yes, because the oxygen doesn't come out until later. It's like the 26th but, or something like that. It's it's like towards the end. I think it might be the same day as uh, E's 10 is coming out. But yeah, it's right. I was going through my, my wish list and trying to think, like, oh, what do I want to buy with this? And I figured, like, you know, sometimes buying DLC can kind of be like, not as exciting because you already own the game and it's not exactly new, but it's kind of new. And I sure. thought, well, I got some free money here, so I might as well just use this to get Atari Fifty, the expansion mm-hmm. pass DLC. Oh, cool! Oh, there you go. That that uh, that makes you're sense. the right person to get that, John. That seems like that game's really up your alley. Yeah, I mean, I I I've, I've enjoyed all of Atari Fifty so far, and I was excited this was coming. Um, from what I've read of the DLC, and I haven't actually played it yet. Um, yeah, it seems like it's going to be a worthwhile addition. I don't really know what I, I didn't look too deep into it. I'm just like that bought into digital eclipse at this point that I can just buy whatever they're coming out with blindly and know that it's going to be great. Uh, but I, I am excited for the second half of the DLC, which comes in November, uh, which is going to be the Intellivision games. I think that's pretty cool. Like Atari bought in television um, likeness in the in the games a couple months ago, yeah. and they're already turning around and doing this. And yeah, it's cool. it's called. Wait, aren't we waiting around on the Amico still? Oh yes, of course. Is isn't yeah, it the Amico definitely coming sometime? Mm-hmm. Two thousand. <laughs> aren't they aren't they calling it the the first console war? It's like the second DLC. It's yeah, called the first console they, war. Yeah. yeah. So they so it's them and yeah. And I have both those systems, so it's actually an interesting Do you? comparison. Is there a constant battle on your shelf? Well, when you're not looking, you keep them far apart. Mm-hmm. I think I do have them sitting on other shelves. Come to think of it, but you got to separate yeah. them so they don't fight. Well, gotta, I've got the you got to turn them so they don't look at each other. I've got the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis sitting next to each other, and I have not noticed. Yeah, paint you know paint streaks on them. Mm-hmm. You like I haven't noticed like streaks of black paint on the Super Nintendo or like silver streaks on the Sega. No Genesis. blast processing yeah. wounds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No mode seven blast processing splices. Blast, hey, marks. it's mode six now. All of a sudden, what happened? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So yeah, I'm excited to play. I haven't played it at all, so I can't can't say anything about it right now. But thank you for the gift. Yeah, I did kind of hint at it that because you you know you were saying, uh, well, you know, I always get you guys stuff for your birthday anyway. But once I saw that uh, Yakuza was coming out in October, I was like, oh well, I'll just I'll just give you the money for Yakuza because I want you to play that game. So. Nice. I already got you the pay, the PS the PS2 version. I might as well get it for you again. On so I can Switch, actually play so you it. can actually play it. Yeah, but this is the remade <laughs> version, so I'm excited to see it on Switch. I think you enjoy it. It's it's a Sega game. You know, people say it has, you know, hints of Feels like uh, the evolution of Shenmue. You have Shenmue yeah. in uh-huh. there, and I mean, it's it. I love the Yakuza games, and and you know, there are beat 'em ups at the heart, at the heart, but there's like a lot of story in there, and there's RPG elements, but. A lot of it is just remember it was made by the guy who made Super Monkey Ball, and that's why uh, that's why I like bowling and and baseball and there's even golf on some of them. There's all these extra mini games that are just really fun to play, you know, because the fucking the guy who made Super Monkey Ball and F Zero GX 
did Yakuza. So, I mean, just think about all the, how great, you know, those great games. And he worked on Shenmue, I think, in, in a way. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's a great game. You should play it when it, comes to, when it comes to Switch. I will. End of the month. Yeah. I think it's coming out around the same time as the, as the whatever, the uh, Amazon show. Which we'll see how that goes. That, that guy does not look like Kiryu at all. Yeah, the I trailer for the Amazon show came out this week. I haven't watched the trailer, but I saw a picture of him, and I was like, you don't look like Kiryu in any way. You know, so no, I don't know. The casting's kind of weird on that, but we'll see. I think the Majima looked better, but whatever. But you're up, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, my only gaming thing from this week was that I uh, playing the shit out of Peglin, and uh, I've officially unlocked all the characters. And I did that by... Of the different uh, classes? Being on Kusorb level 8... Or whatever it's called, the you know when you add like the complications to your runs and I crucible, yeah, crucible. That's right. And I um and I uh, just did. I I kept trying to get the thing where you have a hundred bulwark at the end of the battle, and I could never get there. I got really close. I remember once where it was like ninety. I was so pissed that I didn't beat it uh, with a hundred because it resets each battle. But I finally like just got the right strand of uh of uh of buffs that I could stack on each other. And I had like nearly, I think I may even had over 200 when I finally got it. I just like, you know, I had one that like every time you get a a positive buff, it increases by one. Then I had another one where every time you gain one bulwark, it increases by four. And then um, I had like uh, the thingy where it was shooting out two balls at once. Like, yeah. I couldn't aim it as well, but it was shooting out two. And oh yeah, yeah. It was on the uh, on the boss, the boss on the castle, the mini boss where it's like the last boss that's coming at you is the wall that kills you in one hit. But there's like a a mini boss version of that, where like there's no other enemies fighting you. You're just like attacking him until he finally gets to you. And uh, I was able to do some serious damage on him. And after I unlocked the character, and subsequently cruise crucible level nine. I saw that the other a character was unlocked too, and I don't know what I did to unlock that one. But now I've got all four, and I could play with all four. Nice. But yeah, I've been stuck on Crucible level nine since last week because it's really hard. It, it makes the bomb, the red bombs that are super helpful. It makes those hurt you really bad, so you got to avoid them. Like you got to oh, try no. not to to use the red bombs. So that's a special rule for that one. So I'm still playing it. I mean, I played it a lot today, for instance, but uh. It's not my, I don't know. I'm kind of starting to get bored of it and I want to play something else. And um, I'm trying to talk my, which is the next thing. I got married. My wife, I'm trying to talk my wife into let me buy Zelda, but I think I need to wait a little longer. I think we've got some dust settling that we need to figure out. And because I got married, oh, I, I just said that, but I got married this weekend. Woo! Last we, weekend. Yeah. We yeah. actually fully, last week, whatever. We actually Saturday. were all together in the same space again. Yeah. yeah. It's so rare that the Nintendo, the Nintendo maniacs are all together at once. And there we were Champagne all three Urbana. of us. Champagne Urbana of all places. You know, the birthplace of Hal from uh, 2001 A Space, a space Odyssey. Mm. It was great having you all down and especially with you coming the day before and being in my well, I got to spend a decent amount of time with you. I'm surprised because yeah. it seems like so many other people I barely saw at all especially on the wedding day because it was just a whirlwind it was absolutely absolutely crazy yeah i mean you had 150 people or so at your wedding right yeah it was a, it was the best day of my life but it was also Amen. probably the busiest day of my life and in, in, in like the the social sense because yeah there was never a moment where somebody wasn't like asking me or something or talking to me Trying about to get your attention or, yep yeah. i mean you're the stars of the show so yeah. and everybody there knows you and everybody there wants time with you and you're getting pulled this way that way yeah i found a few well, different what's greatest since we were outside of, there, there were times where i could just go away by myself for a little bit and that was super helpful too otherwise i may have had a bit more trouble with the anxiety and all of it i there were multiple times where i was able to just kind of walk off away from everybody and there was a set of bathrooms closer to the campsites for existence for instance that no one really used because of everyone being up by this the stages got changed there was a lot of stuff it was the whole wedding was like a, a literal whirlwind of yeah. craziness, and uh, but it all came together. And Trey and John were there, and so it was just to to uh, actually help prep things up the day before. And the prepping up the day before was interesting too, because well, first 
rainy, it, rainy, it, it, and it's windy. A, it was on a farm, <laughs> right? Yeah. And Hurricane Helene was coming through this weekend. And uh, on Saturday night, like, it got really, really windy. And so you guys had this this uh, huge tent already constructed. I would say the tent was about was about a 40-foot tent or so. It's like a giant awning, yeah. Giant awning. It was already constructed. You know, the metal poles staked into the ground and all that. But, man, the wind was kicking up and starting to lift the tent up. And it became clear uh, that we had to do something about that. Yeah, we're all get some, by it. Someone got the idea. Was uh, maybe it was your idea, Jeremy? I don't, I don't remember. Uh, to to move the tent and actually fix it to the building. Oh no, that wasn't me. That was uh, Brad, who is the owner of the property. Nate's yeah, dead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we all moved the tent Amish style, like a dozen of us or so. Everybody grabbed the pole. That was awesome. It up. That, that that was that was cool. Um, I actually took a video of it because I I thought it was like. Like a nice. I'm glad moment. you did. I didn't. I didn't. Get I'll send things. it. I'll send it to you. Hell yeah! Because everybody was like working together to 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 you know accomplish this uh, goal of seeing Jeremy and Shauna get married, and you know through this uh, storm happening around it was eight o'clock or so at night. It was dark, and uh, you know where the location of the wedding there was. There was no lights or anything. It was like out in the middle of practically nowhere. So. Yeah, we had like some floodlights and stuff, but a couple floodlights. Yeah, you're literally in the middle of the boonies. We all just grabbed the tent, and somebody was directing. I think Dan was directing, and uh, hoisted it over to the barn and tied it up, and we kind of just like crossed our fingers and prayed that it would blow <laughs> away. And we came back the next day, and it was fine. I feel there must have been some divine intervention because everything was fine and it ended up being like, it, like just the most the, beautiful day. Yeah, the, the actual day. day was perfect. It was blue skies, just sunny, warm, not too warm, just uh, comfortable. And they had structured the stages to all be in kind of the same location. And I think that worked out really worked well. Worked out for the better. The only thing that I would have done is move the, those other two bathrooms a little closer because the ones that were... The ones on the Nearest back there. the stage got wrecked. <laughs> porta potties, yeah. Those porta potties got wrecked, which is a sign of success yeah. for a music festival. I mean, they got used they were full. or, or overloaded. Full. They were full. Yes, I didn't notice they were. They were not like gross, like wrecked. Not, not like gross, no. People were, took care, full. but you know, yeah. you, you can only you know. They were definitely putting it where so it's much. supposed <laughs> to go, but it was full. They were yeah. definitely very full. That's for sure. I mean, you can see it when you come in there. It just keeps building up and building up. You know. But I mean, you can't. Oh, flush first it, so thing, I made myself as soon as we arrived that day. I made, made myself go first thing. I wanted to nice. get, get it when it was clean. Yeah, yep. nice. yeah, took I care of it. That's smart. I can't make if you're able to that. control your bowels like that, I wish I could. Yep. I'm so worried that a, a porta potty that you leave alone long enough will eventually turn into the scene from Conquerors. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the singing poo. You just yeah. hear him start to hum from down there, like oh boy. <laughs> no, I, I just... bring me sweet corn. <laughs> I just I just held it all day. Me, 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 me. I held it all day, and then I pooped like six times when we got back. <laughs> like, I never like really not even days. like just one after so, another after another. There, some people did. I definitely seen some brownsies in there, but you know whatever. No judge. But uh, I don't know. It was it was an absolutely beautiful day, best day of my life. I think I might have already said that. Like just wonderful, and I'm so happy y- y'all could be there. Trey is my best person. You were your speech just was hilarious and awesome and everything i hoped it would be oh, and you promoted the podcast which was awesome because i really wanted you to <laughs> and you read the poetry and stuff and yeah john you were extremely helpful with just being there whatever we needed something done like you were on it so thank, thank you guys you. for coming thank you for being representative of me and uh that yeah, was an honor it was great it was so fun I am so sorry I wasn't able to make it. I, I the reason I waited to the last minute it's to okay. bail is because I'm like trying to figure out a way to make this work. But uh, it sounds like it would have been. I mean, you, there were 150 people there, and you were overwhelmed already. I would have probably just added to that. We may have barely spoken, but the thing is, like, I mean, you would have uh, just hung out. I, I totally understand why Jess. you weren't there. You've got a full family, and you live very far away, so it's okay. You yeah, that you even made it. Made a, but I definitely wanted to invite to you because you're my try, friend. Yeah. You know, so you were. You were there in spirit with us. Well, the thing, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the thing that kills me is I missed my chance to be with all three of you at once. Like, I'm going to get to Chicago. It's it's a given. I'm going to get to Chicago again to see Trey. You live close enough, Jeremy, that 
it, it would be pretty easy to see you when I'm seeing Trey, but well, we John live in Winter... we live we live even closer now with the location of the house and yeah. all that. We're like less right. less than two hours away. Right, right. But John, when am I? I mean, what John's pretty far away. Chances that would get you and I in the same room at the same yeah. time. You know what I mean? Well, maybe uh, for like MGC or something. Yeah, I was yeah. hoping to. I, I really, cool. I really wanted to really, really try to go to MGC next year. Like maybe I'll even get a ticket early to force myself to go or whatever. Because I haven't gone in like when did we go last? Twenty twenty one or something like that. I think so. I've never been before. I've so been it's been. It was either it was twenty because I think it was twenty twenty one or twenty two. I think twenty twenty two was when I was there on a job, so I couldn't actually go. But I was yeah. in Milwaukee working on a TV show, so uh, I ended up just going to the after party and just getting really drunk, and that was about it. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we got to elaborate a little bit more on the uniqueness of Jeremy and Shauna's wedding. Um, it was unlike any other wedding that I've been to, and it was honestly the most fun wedding that I've ever nice. been to. Um, it, it was you guys did a music festival, and, they, and they're not kidding. They're not. That's not a lowercase music festival. That's yeah. not like I was trying to explain to my parents. It wasn't like they just like knew some friends who knew how to play guitar and invited them to come play or something like that. No, it was a it was a legit music festival and every band was awesome. There was like um, there was like twelve bands or something total. Like, yeah. I think I saw that on Facebook that one of you posted yeah. that. Had this been a show that I I paid to go see and spend twelve hours, I would have been more than satisfied. But this was actually like a wedding. It was just yeah. so cool. You get the way you guys did it, and I thought, thought you pulled it off flawlessly. It, was it worked out really fun. well, and and once again. Th- you two in particular, but like all the all the other friends as well, like made this happen. Including, you know, we have friends in all those bands. Every single band. Yeah. How many bands? Well, How well many like bands? The, I think it was ten bands. I mean, like the, the headliner. The headliner, yeah. quote unquote, was like Shauna's best person as well. So I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Like, is, Sun, like Sun Stereo, which I didn't even know until like a couple minutes before they played. But yeah. Yeah, that was. Uh, I mean, I know there's another band after them, but I felt like that was the finale. I mean, you guys were yeah, on, the, you guys were on, on the stage, stage and there was all like, the lights and all that. It was silly. Yeah. I feel like we should put all the, all the bands that played at your at your wedding, like in the show notes, and everybody, sure. just encourage everybody to go check them out because every one of them was a winner, and they played for from the time you guys got married. Uh, I think I think the the ceremony was finished at like one thirty or whatever. Yeah, uh, but then I feel like there was no stopping until i don't know i went to bed around two o'clock and there was still music playing 2 a.m yeah yeah it, it was yeah, like it was like yeah, 12 we, solid uh, hours of music yeah because we great. were waiting yeah we were waiting for sun stereo which wasn't even the last band to be done and they were done at like 1 30 or so so it was like yeah and then i kept yeah hearing, things got yeah. pushed back a little bit um and then also shot and i both performed so we both got to do our own thing and yeah i did yeah. my first uh live set i've actually heard um Shauna did a recording of it. You could not hear the guitar at all, which makes me sad, but it's okay. Oh. It was a little low, yeah. I didn't exactly do a sound check. Do you just let me go up there and do my thing? He just he's like, oh well, whatever. It's your music festival. You can play. I mean, the what stuff you, the, the, audio, yes, the audio levels on the smaller stage were always kind of up or down. Yeah. Like it was it was really hard to hear uh, both you and Shauna's sets. Like, where's if you were if you weren't like right there, like right in front of it, it was kind of hard to hear it. But I do feel like like I was emboldened to like give up an open mic a try or something along those lines because between this and like the mustache contest and stuff I've done, you know, I'm getting a little more comfortable on stage. I'm getting a little more like feeling like my improv chops are getting a little a little stronger, and uh, I think I want to give it. A, I think I'm going to give the open mic thing a try in the next couple of months. But I need. To, I'm just going to do a little recovery time and just kind of you know, yeah. kind of get back to the swing of real life. Which Let's take a break. It's been a little delayed because are we able to move on to my sure where I was going to talk about? I'll just do this. Oh no! Oh. Yes, somebody, when we were te- when we crutch. were tearing stuff down. Somebody, so the following day, hurt. the day y'all left, um, Sean and I were like, I think it was probably within an hour after y'all left. I I got up, I got dressed or whatever, and um, went to the bathroom. I came back, and Shauna was walking back towards the fan. And Sean was just like, I want to go home. I'm like, well, how about this? Let's just leave the van here <laughs> because you shouldn't be driving. You need to sleep. And uh, I'm going to drive us home because I actually got some sleep. So we went, we walked back to the car and left and just kind of like, we didn't even really say goodbye to very many people because lots of people were still sleeping and all that. But uh, yeah, we left and went home and basically ate some dinner and went straight to bed. And uh, 
the following day we went out there to do some some cleanup and uh i had been working like probably six or seven hours at this point and i was tearing down i was taking down all the lights and that big tent that you were talking about earlier trey that had already been assembled yeah and uh all the lights were completely disconnected from the tent except for one set of lights that went over the very top most tent pole and because of how you know think of how lights are there's an individual light bulb every four inches or whatever like fit through the the spot between the canvas and the tent you know those are like pushed together or the tent post because they're like pushed together so you have to like push up on the tent post with one hand and pull the light through so all the light bulbs fit through I'm like, well, I don't want to like walk all the way over there and get the ladder. That was a dumb choice. I'm gonna move this this uh, this uh, picnic table over and stand on that just because it'll only oh, take no. a second. Mm. And while I did that, the one of the legs of the of the picnic table broke. Oh no! And I fell off and I landed on my left leg and um, ended up going like trying to power through it and realizing I couldn't work anymore that day. So I went home and, uh, you know, I, I got a lot, I got a lot done, but I didn't get to like finish tearing everything down. Uh, but yeah, I went home and then I was like, well, what do I do? And eventually our friend Taylor, which y'all met, she was at the, uh, Shauna's wedding party, uh, was like, she's, she's a nurse. She was like, yeah, he needs to go to the ER oh. for what we're, what I was describing. So I went today and they did a bunch of x-rays and none of my bones are broken, but um, they wrapped it up in a compression wrap and I'm on crutches and I can't work for at least probably a week. And, oh no. Uh, I'm Please. going to an orthopedic doctor tomorrow. Oh geez. I think they're going to do an MRI on it just to, to make sure I don't have any tissue damage. But in the, in the meantime, I'm just supposed to be super duper. Uh, what's the word where you don't do anything. Well, maybe sedentary. I was going to say, maybe, maybe you yeah. have an excuse to get uh, echoes of wisdom. Then, if that's no, it. I already tried to run that past. <laughs> I was going to say, if you have any, if and you have didn't any, work. I was going to say, if you have uh, any excuse, like, I mean, you're not working. You know, you got a whole lot of time to no. recover. She's not letting me. It's a game that you could play. Not even with the wedding recovering. gift money. Oh, geez. it's not time yet. Well, we have too much going on. We really do. Like, sure, she's legit. I shouldn't be spending money on it, especially after I got to pay. Figure out whatever I'm going to have to pay after insurance for going to the ER today, but um Yeah, ERs, yeah, you ERs know, can be way too stupid expensive. It was the best thing to do because they had all the equipment there to right. to check me out. So I didn't have to like bounce from building to building and they pulled out a little wheelchair for me. So I was in a wheelchair today. I really was I don't know. Yes last night I was just struggling to even like get up the stairs. Like I literally was crawling up the stairs last oh, night. Oh yeah, and you you got to go up bad. the stairs for your to go to bed too. To the bathroom and the bed. And yeah, I'm like, that's gonna be rough. man. I did not realize how much I weigh. Like I don't know. When only one of your legs works, you yeah. really kind of get an idea of how much your body weighs. I'm like, holy shit, I'm heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like really heavy, and I can't just do this with one leg. Damn. God, that, that makes me think of that line from, what was it, Rise of the Dragon on the Sega CD? One wrong step to the bathroom, and I really have something to piss about. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the only guest, I think, that could just like just pull out a Sega CD quote that, that we've ever had. <laughs> John Wedgworth that can just be like, oh, yeah, you know that Sega CD game where they said this? That's what I like. But about yeah, that. just so that yeah, know, so listeners know, like it's not a huge deal. I mean, it's big enough that I've had to miss some work and... Um, I've got a, another appointment and all that, but so far so good. The big, the big scare was that I broke one of the, the mini bones, you know, there's so many bones in your foot and ankle and right. And there were worries that maybe something had happened down there, but as far as we can tell, no broken bones. So it's just all about whether or not I tore any, uh, tendons or ligaments, hopefully not tendons or ligaments, but, uh, I mean, it's a possibility I sprained something or, you know, my knee is like three times the size of my other knee. So Something's definitely happening there, but until the swelling's completely gone and they do like a soft tissue analysis, they can't really give me a full diagnosis. But so far, so good. Fingers crossed. And, you know, I'm happy. You know, the, the first thing I thought when I was laying on the ground, writhing in pain, well, besides the Peter Griffin thing from Family Guy, <laughs> was, that, uh, <laughs> was that, damn, at least this is happening now and not before the wedding. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're, I'm glad it's, not as bad as it could have been. Yeah, so far so good. Um, definitely, you know. Once again, like Shadow was saying, I can't buy that game because I not only am I 
incurring extra medical bills, but now I got to miss work over it. And yeah, all do that, you so. do you? are not getting any sort of PTO or whatever. I don't. Not know. unless I do some sort of actual f- or like a disability, disability or whatever. I don't know how that. I, don't know I doubt it. I don't think I'm going to be away from work long enough for it to matter. Yeah. But. I mean, that's what I'm hoping. I should say, but you're. I mean, but you're still work. I mean, you're still losing like hours that you were expecting. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed that. to be at work today, you know. For instance, so today was supposed to be my first day back, and yeah, I'm gonna be gone until probably until next week, unless they give me the go ahead to work sooner tomorrow. But judging by how hard it is to go up and down stairs, I mean, I if you, how. I can imagine that it'd be really difficult. I mean, especially with what you're doing yeah. with, with cooking behind the, yeah, know, in the kitchen and all that. I don't think, yeah, you can do that. I don't day. think you can do that yeah. with, with crutches. Crutches. No, it would be, it would be difficult. So, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm not trying to make a huge deal of it. I mean, obviously it sucks, but it could be way worse. And I'm young enough that, to bounce back from this sort of thing. So, you know, it just sucks. It's, a, it's an inconvenience. It's a complication, but I'm just happy to be married. I'm happy to have my ring on. I keep looking at it and I'm just, I'm just stoked. It's, I feel so good. I feel so happy. We're like the three out of four ring clip. And I still like glowing. <laughs> I'm still glowing because I got to hang out with, you know, all of my best friends pretty much all at the same time. And that may never happen again in my life, you know, maybe at my funeral, but that doesn't count. Oh, <laughs> you don't get to hang out for that. Uh, I, was, I mean, I'll uh, just be hanging out. A great, uh, yeah. A, a great surprise for me was uh, that Mark Etzel showed up. That was pretty amazing. I haven't seen oh, that yeah. guy in a long time. So I, I mostly hung out with uh, Trevor and Mark, and 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 uh, and Justin. I hung out with Dan, with Dan and Sarah, for a while too. And yeah, it was good. I had a good time. I, I, I thought was, in particular y'all would have really liked uh, Sweet Milk and uh, Yap Trap. Yeah, Sweet Milk was probably my favorite band. Actually, I really, really yeah, like Sun Stereo, but I didn't know they anything. Do, I, I didn't know anything about them at all. But they were. Uh, I thought you would like Sun Stereo, great, John. Yeah. But they've got some like Flaming Lips vibes to them. Yeah, I know they did a Beck cover, and yeah, like, yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they were they were a lot. Of, yeah, they were a lot of fun. Um, I followed them. I friended. Uh, I friended Charles and followed them on Facebook or whatever. But uh, yeah, and yeah, there was a whole. Uh, there's the whole like pizza fiasco and 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 mm-hmm. the and the and the like pasta truck and all that and uh, a whole lot of a whole lot of stuff happened, you know. Uh, yeah, we had a food truck that was supposed to continue to feed people. They were only but there, left, for, but they were barely early. even there. They were they were not we even there, there for an hour. I don't early. think got there too early and then left too early. Yeah, they we got they got there like half an hour after. Just as people were like lunch. finishing up the the lunch. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> they they obviously. I mean, I'm. Sh- I don't know. I guess they've never worked festivals before or bars or you got to wait. You got to wait later and then you'll have your mad rush, you know, and you'll, it'll be worth yeah. your time. They should have showed up like way later and like stuck around for the end. But I felt like they were barely there. Yeah. I thought they were like from there from like six to seven or something like that. And then they bounced. So I don't know. Whatever. I was looking at the pasta truck going, yeah, that'll, that'll be great around, you know, eight, nine o'clock. <laughs> they, were, they were gone. Well, it was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. It was, uh, yeah. Jess was like, we got to go eat there now. And then Chano was like, "You're gonna give your speech now," and I'm like, "Oh, okay." Well, I was like, "Well, I gotta give the speech." I'm like, "I'm not gonna argue with the with the bride." So I gave the speech, and then we came back, and, and it was they gone. Were gone. <laughs> yeah, and then we all and then we went to try to get pasta, and it was gone. And they were but, like, "Okay, I just heard that he's doing a speech. Let's get out of here. They're gonna do a speech. Let's get out of here." Yeah, yeah, uh, and but yeah, and and just like uh, worked a bunch of connected a bunch of things together to get a. Uh, to get pizza for everybody, that was its own like uh, yeah, just yeah, was the head, headache, headache on top of that, and you know. But it did. We did end up with a lot of pizzas, and I ate like six pieces of pizza when it finally got there. So good. And I saw other people were eating it too, and I saw people like trying to figure out where it came from, and I was like, oh no, that was my wife like helped get a lot of that shit, get a lot of that shit going. Well, aside from other other random people paying for it, and and uh, it it all kind of came together. Like well. Just came out with the idea, and then Shauna ordered the pizza, and then there was some other dude who, I don't know who it was, but very nicely just paid for everything, and another person drove, because a lot of us were drunk and didn't want to yeah. drive, and it all just kind of, yeah, it all just kind of came together to go pick up. It was up, magical. To go pick up like 15 said, pizzas for, for a whole bunch of people that didn't have any food, because the fucking, yeah, because the fucking pi- pasta truck took off there, yeah, so... But it, yeah, and, we, we made uh, it work. the extended <laughs> drama of the pasta truck leaving was that we had another food truck lined up that was supposed to stay the entire time you mm. know once well supposed to stay till the bands were done yeah they were going to show up later than pasta media showed up because but they that just makes didn't sense. yeah 
But uh, no, they were good. They were going to be the main food truck, the only food truck. And then they got a hold of us a couple weeks before the wedding, and we're like, oh. "Yeah, we can't do that anymore." So we had to find like a secondary food truck, and so we didn't have any sort of agreement with how long they were going to stay. So they were just basically like, "We want to leave," and they just left. So yeah, that sucks. But yeah, it all worked out. And then a lot of that pizza ended up, or whatever was left of that pizza, ended up in the back five acres where there was still probably like twenty or twenty five people just camping and hanging out back there. Oh, good. The as, yeah, as long as people ate it eventually, that's oh, yeah, that's good. I mean, I I did see a lot of people eating it when I was eating it, and I really was like, by the time yeah, by the time I got there, I was just like, yeah, I really had like like five or six pieces of pizza. I was just like, I was just like slamming it in my face. So yeah, nice. I was I was starving, so it was it's all good. But uh, why don't we uh, talk about some news and then be sure and then be done here. News, 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 news. Don't snooze or you miss the news. It's now we're in the now we're in the uh, the month of October. I, w- I was going to try to do a full list of all the stuff releasing in October because there's a lot of stuff coming out, but I just didn't want to put all the time to it. So we'll do it next week. We'll do that next week. But this week uh, was it SpongeBob SquarePants Patrick Star game is coming out for forty dollars this week. Uh, I know one of our listeners likes the series, so I put it on here. Sword Art Online Fractured Daydream that comes out this week as well. Uh, Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel comes out for six dollars this week. Also, this game looks fucking hilarious, and I'm sure it's awful, but I kind of want to try it out. Urban Skater Skateboard Delivery City Challenge. Uh, look at this. It's on Switch. Uh, it's out now. It's like a ten dollar game. And the description of it is hilarious. It's like this is the most cinematic skateboard delivery game ever. And I guess you like play as like a as a fucking uh, you know DoorDash person or something, but you're on a skateboard, and it looks awful. But I kind of want to play it just because of how hilariously awful it looks. And I'm always interested in these like uh, delivery games. There's a few of them that are on there, and I've done like delivery driving stuff. And I think it could be a really good game if you did it right. Like if you did about like how. You know how you need to turn down the bad orders and you got to like you want to like do like, you know, you don't want to go too far on the mileage, but you want to stay out of certain like neighborhoods and you don't want to go downtown or you have to avoid like street fests and stuff like that. That could be a really fun game if you put this that together and ordered and, at and, a hospital and didn't tell you the exact address. But, yeah. yeah, or, or, or the hospital to... stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or, or you have to deal with your car getting towed because you parked yep. in the wrong place. And, and now you have to pay $200 and you may not even make a hundred on your day. And yeah, <laughs> I think that would be a much more interesting game where you have to balance like your, your bills versus trying to make money off of that shit. But, uh, I don't know. I just thought it looked hilarious. And I guess it had, since it happened in between episodes, Bellatro is now on iPhone also it for, is. for $10. I mean, you could probably swing that. I mean, like you need another Bellatro. You've already no. I'm not buying that either. Two of them for like a hundred hours, like about between the two of them. I think I'm gonna. But it is available. Cobble now. something together to get Zelda in the next couple of weeks. But that's just basically my next goal until Brothership. I think. There's another. Uh, speaking of Brothership, this reminded me of it, but I don't want to forget about it. Um, you know, so so Echoes of Wisdom is out. You know, so Nintendo's next big games are Mario and Luigi Brothership and. Mario Party Jamboree, and I guess a lot of people have played Mario Party Jamboree, and there's a whole bunch of Mario Party uh, previews out there, and I finally got a chance to look at them today, and uh, something that really, really uh, intrigued me, and, and you know, made me be like, oh, is uh, there's a new there's a new pro mode in Mario Party, okay. which is really, really mm-hmm. cool. So it seems like they're actually trying to make that they might even make Mario Party like more of a competitive game, is what it looks like, and I'm actually really excited about it. So like so Mario Party Pro mode, I guess you have to play the game once and then you unlock Pro mode and it has different rules versus the regular Mario Party. And there's just some cool things in there. Like number 1, uh you get to pick an item to start the game with before you've actually started. Like they've never done that in Mario Party before where you can start with a usable item. Uh also um they're changing the lucky spaces on the Pro mode to where you only get two options and you can pick them whenever you want. You either get 10 coins or you get double dice. That's what you get. Uh, in pro mode, uh, for the first time in a long time, you can actually battle somebody for a star. You haven't been able to do that since the GameCube games, maybe. I don't remember which one you could actually fight for a star for, but I always miss that and wish it was in everything. Um, also, I guess if you land on the Bowser space, you'll automatically lose a star. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, something that's really cool about the pro version is it will actually show you, it'll show you where the star is, but it'll actually show you all the spots where the star could be. When it's not there, so you can actually kind of try to strategize where the star is going to move to, 
And you'll be able to play the pro mode online with uh, randoms and all that. So I don't know that that really intrigues me because, yeah, we need we need a, need a fucking hardcore Mario Party. Like you know we you can see it over here on my wall here the old Mario Party belt. This is actually this is actually Mario Party belt 2.0. Uh, the the 1.0 left with Tim when he went to L.A. But we, we made a Mario Party belt, like a championship belt, you know, that where we would have Mario Party competitions for it. And uh, we had rules, you know, like if you were from out of town, you had to win like more than one round. You'd have to win it, win it more than once in order, in order to take the belt with you and all that stuff. And, and we would have like, you know, challenges for the belt and it would go back and forth. And we were pretty serious Mario Party players in college. And I like the idea of, of them like giving you know giving a shit about this new Mario Party and being like hey why don't we do like a why don't we actually have a pro mode where you can maybe make this like a competitive sport eventually and uh, I'm all for that I'm very excited about Mario Party Jamboree uh, I got the I got the Nintendo voucher so I already paid for it so it's already you know it's free to me I guess because I paid for it a couple months ago so Can you preload it yet No it, they won't let you preload it until the week before it comes out Okay and it's coming out on the 17th so. I mean, you can pre-order it, but it won't actually preload until the week before because now they wanted to make it. Because I mentioned it before, you used to be able to like buy it and preload it like way before, but I think they changed it because now you can actually take it. You can actually refund it in a certain amount of time. So if you if you pre if you like preload it, you can cancel it, or you pre-order it, you can cancel it before the week, and then you won't get charged like that sort of thing in case you decide you don't want the game. But there, okay. there's some really interesting mechanics to it. Like I guess uh, the Jamboree mode is uh, it, it's similar to Super to Super Mario Party, which was the first Switch game, and you know to where you would get a buddy that would go with you and you could roll more than once. So there's a possibility of you finding another character on the map, and if you happen to find another character, you can actually do things twice, which is what's crazy about this is you could buy like two stars at once or you could steal two stars from two people or from one person at the same time Dang. or you could steal money from one person to make enough money to steal a star from a person after that so that is kind of like oh that's a huge game changer like in the mario Party so like world, you get to so. a star but then you could steal money and then buy it like no no like if you get to a boo that steals stars from oh, people okay. and so the prices are still the same from what i heard so so it still costs you 50 dollars or 50 coins to steal a star from somebody but if you don't have 50 coins and you have this uh, jamboree thing, uh, you can basically use the boo once to steal coins from somebody and then have enough money to steal a star from that same person afterwards, you know, or, or another person or whatever. You know, you can say you have like 40 coins and you can get 50 coins and steal a star or you could steal two stars. Like, yeah, that sounds major. But no, I'm really excited about the pro mode. And I, from what I heard, you know, the previews sound very positive. I mean, who knows? Like I said before, we saw great previews of Plucky, of Plucky Squire, and that one kind of like seems yeah, to have fizz, fizzled out, you know. But uh, but I mean, I'm I don't know. I'm, it, most of the time, people never say anything good about Mario Party games, and I've played all of them. I love them, whatever. And uh, I'm excited to play this one, especially that I can do random online, and the pro mode sounds great. Oh yeah, and you can actually like vote on uh, mini games too. Which oh, is nice. a big, which is a big deal, because like, uh, you know, and I actually asked uh, the NVC group about that when they were like, "Hey, you have any questions about Mario Party?" I specifically said myself, uh, "Hey, do you have? Will they repeat the mini games?" Because Justin always always found that annoying when you're playing like one game session, and you'll play one mini game multiple times when there's like 300 fucking mini games in the game. Like, just make it to where you play it once and then you play a different one. Like, seriously, yeah. there's a ton of mini games in there. Like, you don't have to repeat one in the same session. Like, the you know, whatever. That would be trivially easy to program, too, I would think. You yeah, just yeah, just make it to where you just do it, it once and, do an exception and then you can't do it again. And I guess there's right. only 15 uh, mo fully motion-controlled games in there, but I, I want to try all of them whenever they come out. come out. But anyway, it'll be out on the 17th. I'm really excited about playing it. And the pro mode sounds really cool, so I want to try to you know go get my ass kicked online. Uh, and I did have a lot of fun with Mario Party Superstars playing people randomly online who kicked my ass, but it was still fun <laughs> for, for a while. And this one has the most boards than any Mario Party games has had since, like, the GameCube era. So that's pretty cool. So very excited about it as far as, like, uh, new preview stuff. What else is on the is on the news docket here? John got to meet my cats. Yes, I did get to meet the cats, finally. Oh, yeah. As soon as yeah. John set up his bed, Keenan laid where the pillow goes. Yep, that's, that sounds, plopped down that sounds right, about right, right there. About two <laughs> seconds. That's how they do oh. it. That's how they do it. It's like saying, oh, thanks, thanks. You know? <laughs> oh, thanks for making a bed for me. Oh, wow. Nice. I'll take it. I'll take it. 
We got some Switch 2 rumors. Oh, do we? Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's that time. That's the time that we see those. Yeah. What's the new What's the new thing? I I remember you telling me about a a dial. Yes. It's probably in here. Sounds like a an iPod. Dial it up. Yeah. So there's one one rumor that says uh, the shoulder buttons will include a scroll wheel. So you don't think of shoulder buttons, and you're like, oh, well, that's not really wheel shaped. Well, it's gonna be more like um, a haptic scroll wheel. But no, it'll be, it'll be more like like the conveyor belt on, at the grocery store, like that kind of thing, like a you know rectangular shape, but it's you can scroll, you can move okay. it. Okay, that's what they're saying. So it's gonna have an actual tread on it. I got tread. Yeah, that's what I, was, what I was meaning to say. It's because of that new conveyor belt sushi tycoon game that's coming to Switch Two. I don't know if you guys. <laughs> right. You get little it. sushis on your on your, <laughs> on your shoulder buttons. <laughs> the, the yeah, it sounds like that could make it really cool for for music software or video editing mm-hmm. software. But mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I don't get sure. I don't get it otherwise. I'm trying to think of a practical application, but you know, we've thought that of lots of things that Nintendo announced. They you know, always have a way day. of making it work. Then you see like two right. games that use it, and then no one else does. Right. Yep. And then and then that one company will make like one five dollar game that uses it or something. Like those guys with the with the box. Oh yeah. But yeah, more Switch Two stuff. I think. I, what was it? Uh, yeah, somebody from an accessory company said uh, uh, that it would come out in March or April. March or April. This like this like uh, this news uh, broke like right like at the beginning of the wedding or whatever or whatever. I remember it was pretty. Yeah. It was around that time, but I was like, "Yeah, I remember because okay. they said congratulations, Jeremy and Shauna." By the way, here's a new rumor. <laughs> here's, a new, here's a new Switch Two thing. You know, if you can't if you can't afford Equus of Wisdom, uh, you do have a couple uh, Nicolas Cage movies that you could you could throw on while you're, well, yeah. you know, while you're on crutches that that, that you got for your wedding that you can sure. watch. That's that's a few hours you can you can put to that at least. True, true, true. And yeah, you guys can throw some wireless mics both on a each DVD other and too. And a Blu-ray. I thought they were both Blu-rays. Is one of them? A Maybe DVD? they are both Blu-rays. I just kn- I saw one that had the actual. No. I thought they were both Blu-rays, but you're e- probably right. Either you way, know, you we can... ended up finding two more gifts the next day that we had not opened. So, oh, there you go. It's a good thing you had us open it because yeah, we found two more gifts that, and neither of which had a name on them, by the way. So that's that's what I'm saying. I know I know it's tra- traditionally you're supposed to leave a pile of gifts for the wedding or whatever. And I'm just saying this from my own experience from our wedding. I kind of wish we would have had a gift opening ceremony. I, I know people don't normally do that because of whatever, but yeah. but I we ended up with a pile, not a birthday party. But we ended up with a pile of gifts that we didn't know where who where, who they were from. You know, they were just that's, that's we, we had to kind of like do our own like little detective work to try to figure it out. You know, so it we was, we just have a kinda, couple we need to do that with. But, but also yeah. it was like you know like Jeremy made like specific like Game Boys for us, which is incredibly awesome. But I didn't really get to thank you about it because I didn't know about it until like a few. I thought days I gave after. those to you separate. Maybe I didn't. No, I thought they ended up in the box. Were they? Okay. I thought I so. Remember. I don't know. And anyway, it, I mean, like I said, it was a whirl for us too. Uh, you know, I don't remember. Uh, and you never get to spend enough time with anybody. And you know, it's I probably spent like two minutes with every person there or whatever. You know, so you don't really get to hang out, but. What did you think of your wedding gifts for me? No, I was saying, oh, was, I was saying, I was saying they're well, really cool. I mean, getting the the grab bag of booze, you know, very thoughtful. Oh yeah, no, oh, did you did you see that I placed the bag is up here? I put it, uh-uh. uh, I put it up here in the in the view of the of the room, okay. so you could see it. Now I see it. It's and right, it's, was, it's right above the hand. It. It's 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 right above the uh, DS hand. The yeah, I got everybody cool. a bag of holding. A bag of holding. Yes, I I didn't notice until. Well, after the fact that the bag of holding has eyes on it, it's kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah. I put yeah. it, I put it <laughs> forward. I put it with the eyes. They're like pointing forward there. Like it has like like not just drawn on, but like they're like beady eyes, like half marbles stuck in this bag, and they're just kind of looking at you. It's cool. Yeah. It, well, and it kind of looks like it's made out of snake skin or dragon skin or whatever, so it kind of goes with that with that right. theme, you know. And it's it, got little it, miniature you, pockets inside too. I haven't used uh, I haven't used the the phone battery, but. If uh, I will, very thoughtfully, uh, Jeremy gave us all uh, all batteries, which was you know coming in handy for for a camping trip. So. I was trying to make it seem like that was like uh, like hit point potions, like or sure, whatever, like a, in the real world. Well, I mean, there were there were spirits in there that real world fear yeah. reveal uh, refill refill your MPs. Uh, yeah, because well, mm-hmm. there was some alcohol in there as well. Uh, MP at the expense of HP. I got uh yeah, and then PP. <laughs> I I got um. <laughs> What was it? Mm-hmm. I got Tullamore Dew and, and uh, Jägermeister, and I traded my Jägermeister with John for John's uh, Bacardi. 
So. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I've drank, and they're gone. I, I well, I drank all oh, yeah. the Tullamore Dew. I drank in a cup in like a couple minutes at the event, and the rum. I actually made a rum tea when we got back because nice. we had what do we we had two Bloody Marys, and then I had a rum tea, and then I think I had another beer, and yeah, and then I ended up sleeping for like fifteen hours uh, after John left. Like John, a, like, like, John, like like Monday Dan night. Act, Dan actually got a joint as well, but I didn't think y'all would care about that. Oh, sure, I, I saw oh, yeah. that. Uh, yeah, after John, after John left, you like left in the morning or whatever. Uh, yeah. Monday night, I ended up sleeping from like 10 p.m. to 12 p.m. the next day. So oh, yeah, it was I like home, I, was I, I slept sleeping. for like 14, 15 hours. <laughs> like it was really, yeah. I, I was exhausted. We slept a lot. Too much, too much socialness for me. I need, I needed recovery. Oh yeah, I slept all day, and then I think like. I'm not super happy I injured myself, but it is kind of like prolonging that sense that I haven't gone back to the real world yet, you know. Well, now you can have. Some, I just have, have to go more, to the doctors and get scanned. Now you can have some more recovery and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, what else do we have here on the on the on the news? Hey, well, some games got announced real quick. Uh, sure. The Rocky Horror video game that's very cool. It's going to be an NES style game. I don't know if they're actually making it for the NES, but it's going to be NES style. I mean, it's game. a, it's a, yeah. I don't know if it's, it's a, like a Maniac Mansion kind of thing. I didn't get a sense. So, of, I thought it was like a platformer. I, I heard it was kind of Metroidvania ish. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of interested in it, but uh, yeah. I'm definitely interested in this. I'm, I'm going to say yeah, I will most likely get this. If anything, just to show my sister because she loves Rocky Horror. I watched, yeah, it. I watched it for the first time a couple of years ago. I'd never seen it all the way through. I've seen it several times. I actually did go to see it at the music box. Where they're throwing the spoons and all that kind of stuff. The fun stuff. Um, Slay the <laughs> Princess, the pristine cut. Trey, you've, you've heard about this game before? You you, prob- right? you probably heard about this too, Jeremy. Uh, um, what, you know, what's his face? Uh, uh, Eric Van Allen talks about it all the time on uh, Acts of the Blood God. It's like a... I've heard of it. I've never played it. It's been compared. It's been compared to um the that uh that one card game that you really liked. Uh, that was your game of the year that one year. Inscription. Inscription. Yeah, people have compared it to Inscription, like like that sort okay. of thing, where it kind of fucks with you, and it also kind of fucks with the way that video games are and like what you expect it to be. Like Good. apparently, it kind of like it 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 sort of it sort of it sort of is like a visual novel, but it kind of screws with the way that is presented or whatever. I don't know. I've heard nothing but great things about it, and it's cool that it's coming to Switch. So I'm, I'm excited to, to check it out. I would just say, to me, it kind of like... Because I remember there was this game called Fat Princess back in the day. Which I remember that one. It's not like I, that I one. never played. But then there was also... <laughs> um, what's that game on um, on the GameCube that we got? To, oh, Pan... Or whatever it was called. Pan's Tower? Was that what it was? Oh, Pan, oh, oh, uh, Pandora's Tower? Pandora's, Pandora's Tower, Tower, where yeah. you had to like keep feeding her stuff to keep her from turning into a monster. Like that's sort of what I'm yeah. thinking. Like slay the princess. That, that game's be. really cool. I, well, Pandora's tower is really cool. Uh, but no, I, I think it's more like it has to do with how you talk, how you talk to her. Like, shall I answer your questions? I guess the game will change depending on how you answer. Oh, okay. And, and the whole story will change. Like it sounded really unique. Like it sounded like a video game, a type of video game that I'd never seen before, which is cool. So, I mean, I'm happy it's going to switch so I can try it. So, and like I said, I, you know, they talk about Acts of the Blood God and anything Eric that Eric likes, I'm always interested in because he seems to like really cool games. But I remember uh, listening to him talking about it while I was vacuuming at the other apartment. So <laughs> that but, sucks. Uh, yeah. No, I just uh, it's just connected to vacuuming Thanks. or whatever. But uh, I don't know. But I think it looks awesome. I got I got the joke. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, Tanuki Pond's Summer, which is looking like one of those uh, uh, Boko no Yatsume. I think I'm saying that right, games. You Boko, are. Boko, no, the... Boko no Natsu Yatsume. Yep, but with a Tanuki. Looks kind of cute. I mean, I already, uh, I already have a Tanuki here. I don't, I don't need to I don't need to get a game about it. You don't need a second one? Oh, okay. oh, I'm, oh I'm kidding. I mean, well, our cat's name is Tanuki. Also, uh, that that Bakaru game that I played is all about a Tanuki. Also, even it though is. he's he's never really in his well, I mean he's in t- his Tanuki form in the cutscenes, but you never really play him as a Tanuki, so you don't really get the no. idea of that. But but Bakaru is an awesome game. Everybody, just everybody play that game or buy it or whatever if you can. We basically it's to make him look like like Goemon, you know, so he's transformed mm-hmm. into a Goemon looking character. But, it's one called Raven Fighters Remix Collection, which I'd not heard of Raven Fighters before, but I guess it has enough games in the series to warrant a collection. Looks like a, a mech type game. And but the one that I really want to talk about is the Jackbox Survey Scramble. This is cool. Uh, Jackbox announced this new game. Um, 
coming soon. Which all about is, like plotting out mobs of ma- uh, land for uh, civil engineering, right? The, sur- the survey scramble. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're yeah, you're surveying. Everybody, for, uh... everybody, just run out into the world with those you know tripods and yeah. <laughs> a yellow hat and do it quick. Just look through the little weird telescope thing. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out the hypotenuse. Fuck off. It's like a shoot. Well, uh, the the Raiden fighters is is a shoot 'em up. Going back to that, the one that we the one we talked about earlier. That's what it looks like. Some arcade shoot 'em up stuff. Okay. Yeah, um, the arcade. Yeah, the jack- but the Jackbox game is like it's a live survey. So I guess you it's sort of like Family Feud, but thousands of people are playing at once. Mm. It, it's like and it's like, like it's like espionage, right? But a big Steve version Hart just explodes very early on. <laughs> Because we always have, we already he comes have. Comes to your uh, house. And, yep. There's too many people playing, and he just can't deal with the uh, sensuality. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the double entendres destroy him. I worked with him before, you know. Me and Steve Harvey, we're best friends. No, I'm kidding. I, but I did, I did do some, a couple jobs for the Steve Harvey show. But do you uh, cite his mustache as a, a character, like a reference? No, I mean, I, I always. Uh, People told me that he was a total asshole and that I should be careful around him. But he was nice to me when I worked with him, so I'll, I'll say that much. But I didn't work out with him as much. I did a couple. I did a couple jobs with him on different on different occasions. But and one of them wasn't directly with him. It was for a segment that showed during his TV show. But mm. but yeah. Anyway, we're you know we're best friends. Me and Steve Harvey. Because <laughs> I put a microphone on him once. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. So no, new new Jackbox thing. Seems cool. I'm kind of interested. Uh, I'm interested in the idea of it. Yeah, where it's a. I wonder if that means it's going to be. Is it a, a full price Jackbox game? Is it a, like a mode within Jackbox? Or is this? It's its own game. game. But you're going to so buy it with like the Drawful sense of two. playing. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yes, we mentioned. I, I remember. I do have Drawful Two on as its own thingy on my Switch. I remember John mentioning this as we were driving down to Champagne, and just mentioned uh, Gespionage. Which is a Jackbox game, and it is kind of like that, but on a bigger scale. This is kind of what I gathered from that, because Gespionage is like where you do a similar thing, but it's within like four or five people in the room, you know. So. There's going to be a new untitled Tetris game from the developer Erica Arika. Um, Arika, is how I would say. What Trace said. Yeah, <laughs> and it's going to be in their Grandmaster series, and it's designed to make you better at Tetris. That's cool. So, like so, every other Tetris game. <laughs> well, I mean, have you played? Uh, they do actually have Grandmaster Tetris on Switch, and I have it. And it's just—I always thought it was the way. I mean, I've heard them describe it on Eight Four Play, and it sounded like it was a much more difficult Tetris. I mean, it's not an easy Tetris to do, but it is basically like best basic Tetris, you know. And I guess mm-hmm. it'll make you better because it's harder than most Tetrises. Like it's well, not it's the, like the... It's, it's not like a learning program or whatever. At least the Grandmaster that I've played. So the thrust of this new one, they're saying, basically is to teach you how to play Tetris better. So you'll probably be learning about what they call T-rolling or something, or how to play with T-spin. NES. T-spin, yeah. It's called T-spin. Or if you're even, or if you're, if you're in the know, there's also L-spins, which I've done. The L-spin. But they don't actually refer to it. I mean, they, they don't call it a thing, but it is something you can do in Tetris. Anyway. But if you do I've, one I've of those done it win, before. they call it a W-spin. Yeah, well, yeah, there are no W space to Tetraminos that I know of. Like, 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 we needed another Tetris game. I mean, I'll buy it anyway. I have all the other dumb Tetris. Uh, games. you I'll can fit it in. in. Yeah, nice, <laughs> exactly. But um, you'll fit it in, and then all the rest of them will disappear. <laughs> um, so a Kickstarter was announced for a, a game series, new game in a series that we've talked about a lot on this show. I just um, am now finding out about this. Haunted Halloween '87, Year of the Witch. Yeah, we have '80s. Uh, I mean, I have whatever what whatever ones on the Switch. That was '86, '85 right? and '86. Yeah, 86. I think '86, '87. Well, yeah. we we've talked to. They've been on the show and talked about it before. We've had mm-hmm, retrotainment mm-hmm. on retro-tainment. here many a times, and also they're you know they've started up Eight Bit Legit, which we've talked to many people from that from the people who make the new NES games. Right, and they're so, the ones who put together my game maestro that I have that interfaces with my keyboard to my. Uh, like t- from the Nintendo to the the keyboard it turns an NES into a MIDI controlled instrument. There we go. But they uh they've uh, they very well made their goal. It says they're at their goal was five thousand and they're at eighteen thousand. So cool. That means it'll That's happen. That's well over double. Yeah, it's uh slightly over triple. So yeah, <laughs> as well. Uh, I mean, I'm, hopefully we'll be able to talk to them uh, when it comes because we talk. Yeah, because we talk to them about they full, might be too quiet. big for us now. 
who knows? Well, we still talk. Yeah, we still talking about the uh, eight bit, the uh, eight bit legit stuff. I'm looking at uh, videos on the Kickstarter right now, and it very much looks like the other one, like the animation of the characters too, and all that. And I did enjoy uh, Halloween '86. It came out when we were on our honeymoon, when Justin well, and I full, were on our honeymoon in, in Japan. Game, right? I remember playing it in Japan. I think yeah, of Retrotainment, right? Full yeah, would have been, been full quiet. Yeah, and we all played that and interviewed about that. And also there was the. Um, the the garbage pail kids game before That's right. that so yeah they have a good amount of they stuff produced on right i don't think they developed it yeah they i i don't i mean they were involved with it mm-hmm. but i don't remember all the exact uh, details of it so going a little broader now for some legal developments uh not just this doesn't affect just the world of video games but uh digital purchases at large california's new law will force online storefronts to disclose that buyers don't actually own their digitally purchased media Applause, applause, applause. Well, anyone understand that is the question. That That's just buying it digital. Like, it's just another app you're buying, right? Yep. I mean, you don't yep. own anything, really. <laughs> I mean, I think, like, outside our, our world of, you know, podcasting, talking about video games, there's probably a lot of people who've never really considered that or, devin- or don't really realize that, you know, that, that they just, you know, are familiar with, Buying stuff at an actual store, even buying physical goods from Amazon. And what's the difference if I buy, you know, if I buy a CD from Amazon versus I buy digital music from Amazon? What's the difference, right? Probably a lot of folks who just like never considered that. And I do think it's that's helpful and and does no harm to put a banner on these storefronts just to say, hey, you know, when you buy this stuff, it's not really yours, and you're just licensing it. So. I don't think it can do any harm. I think it's good to educate people in that way at the uh, point of sale. But the so, funny, the good. funny thing is, is that if they're buying things digitally, they won't actually be going to the store. Though they'll be buying them digitally from their homes. So how is the storefront actually helping anybody? Because, no, no, because the, you're going, like, you're going here to buy it to no, buy no. a card that will help you buy stuff on the eShop or what? So my understanding is that it's going to be like on Amazon.com somewhere. Like, oh, okay. Or on the PlayStation Store or the Nintendo eShop. Oh, you mean like not an actual physical st- uh, storefront? You I'm thinking maybe like a, a warning pop. You mean an app or, dis- or whatever? A disclaimer. Yeah. A disclaimer. A disclaimer. Yeah. Just it's kind of like the yeah. outside of a cigarette pack. It will be like, don't do this when you're pregnant, but then eventually, like Europe's going to get a hold of it. And it's going to be like, this right. will kill you. Or now, <laughs> like the same yeah. and on the same token, you, when you go to a lot of websites, it'll pop up and say. Do you want to reject cookies or do you accept all cookies? That's because yeah. of a similar law that was passed in California some years ago. And, you know, as annoying as I think that that might be, that particular Oh, I love that. Issue, I, I like it. I, if I I'm on a website that I don't give a shit about, I'm like, yeah, you know reject, what? No, reject. I'm just going fuck, fuck back. Your, I, fuck your, fuck I just cookies. think all that stuff should be handled at the at the at the browser level so yeah. i can just do it once and i don't have to do it for every single website well it's all it, and it's also like which i think is such you a also dumb, have to trust your browser it's such yeah. a dumb thing that people ask you but when you like put your when you sign up for something and it's like hey it, it, are you going to be mad if we sell your uh information to another company and you can actually yeah. say no to that it's like this is a question like nobody nobody's actually going to want that yeah so yep or if you've lived in california you're familiar with their with prop 65 every time you enter a building you see a sign there that says this building contains some chemicals that uh, mm-hmm. are known to cause cancer which cool There's you'll no see on products everywhere it says in yep. the state of california i was gonna say yep. so like so like every gas station you go to says that literally every building because they sell like, cigarettes when i first moved there when i went into my first apartment building there i noticed it at the entranceway and i just asked somebody what, what this was about and they're like oh yeah that's everywhere it's every building. If it's, if it's a public building that you enter, it's there somewhere. But yeah, that's that's cool. Educate more people and maybe persuade uh, these digital storefronts to I don't know, do things in a different way where people actually have ownership and can have the have the right to re-download their stuff or, or make a copy of their stuff or, or something. Yeah, it's a, it's a step toward a better better world. I had a similar issue with that. Actually, let's talk about anniversaries first. Sure. Uh, today, as of today, is the five-year anniversary of AW Dynamite. That's pretty wild. That uh, yeah, a, the a, the AW Dynamite was uh, this was on this day uh, five years ago. 
Because I talking went, about the actual like wrestling event. The rest, uh, yeah. Them, their first like televised event was was five years ago of Dynamite. Was AEW a thing before that, or was this just the first? Was this the absolute not for first? not for very long? I don't think. I think, from my understanding, like they started the company, and I think they had a pay per view because okay. their first pay per view was in Chicago, I believe. The very first all in the first aw all in was in chicago in 2019 had they yet acquired like ring of fire and the other ring of honor well no honor, yeah. no that was later well ring of yeah. honor was a thing for a long time wait uh was it tony khan bought ring of honor a few a few years ago but uh but no it, yeah their their first uh the first dynamite was five years ago and i remember watching it on youtube and that was uh what brought me back into wrestling uh, Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes were there. They were in the front row. They had this whole skit with them and private party and all that. And yeah, and it was fun. And I was able to watch it for free on YouTube because somebody had uploaded it. And then I t- watched the second one and then the third one was not available. So I bought digital cable and, you know, however many dollars the rest since is then, uh, I got into it, but no, it's pretty cool. Cause it's what uh, they're almost, have they almost beat the record for WCW? Cause WCW was only around for like six years maybe maybe less i mean it always feels like longer but they're pretty close you're talking about as co- competitors to wwe well i mean no w the, well i guess wcw nitro the wcw nitro show okay. like they're they've about beat the years of that okay but the first the first aw thing i ever went to was in november of 2019 so so i was i went the first when they had first started i went to their first i went to the to see dynamite here so and, and it was like that had to have been like dynamite number six or something like that it was it was pretty close like it was in the single digits of the amount oh, yeah, of... you went with kevin didn't you that was like right after your wedding was it yeah no it was yeah we got married in 2019 i think yeah. you went with kevin because you were thinking you were trying to have me come back and go with you i did yeah i, I bought i, I bought, couldn't make it swing i bought two tickets yeah for november and then maybe you're gonna try to get Caleb to go, but Caleb couldn't go. I either. think Caleb was gonna go with me, and he and he canceled out yeah. on me. And I yeah, and ended up going with uh yeah with Kevin with Kevin Fair, and uh, he recorded uh he recorded like the uh, he recorded some of it and posted it on uh, Facebook and all that. I remember uh yeah, and uh, that was the first AEW thing I ever saw, and then I saw the pay per view in 2020, and then the whole world shut down. But yeah, it's a, it's pretty wild. that It's been five years and it almost five years for our wedding anniversary too in a couple yeah. weeks so 11 days but but i the only reason i wanted to say that first of all of the of all of the anniversary stuff i was i had a point here i was going to it uh was the idea of not owning anything because uh the so so the app that i buy pay-per-view through uh bleacher report they're actually getting shut down and uh i've bought like 16 pay-per-views through there and I was hoping that I would forever get to watch them. And uh, I guess they're switching over to like Thriller TV or some other app. And I had to like go through some shit to like transfer my pay-per-views. But I'm not getting all of them. There's like two or three that I still can't access through there. That I can only access through Bleacher Report. And who knows how long that'll be here before I won't be able to. And I was thinking about the same thing. It's like how do I find a way to save these things that, that I own digitally, but I don't own, you know, but I want to own, I expect it to own forever, you know? So yeah, that just made me, you got a, a DVR. Oh, uh, no, I mean, I would have to find a way. I mean, that wouldn't matter. No, I mean, yeah. uh, what I, I would have to find a way to hook my, com- hook my phone up to my computer or something and capture it on there and then have yeah. it on a hard drive or something like that. I mean, yeah. I have, I have a DVR through my sling app, but I mean, you mean like a VCR? I mean DVR. You have well, to have cable to, to record things, but you don't no, even own, you don't even own that either. There's yep. a certain amount of time before they delete Stream that. Stream it through your uh, Elgato. Yeah, I would have to find a way to hook my phone up to something and then like record it, and I don't know. I mean that that seems like mo- much more hassle because honestly, if I if I wanted to, even if I lost all of the pay per views that I have now, like those three pay per views that I'm missing are selling for like nine dollars or whatever. So if I really do end up losing them. I'll just buy them again, I guess, for nine dollars. But still, I was I was upset when I heard the, that Bleacher Report was going away because I was like, "Oh no, my pay per views! I thought I would have them forever." I need to make I need to make one of you watch uh, some wrestling event at five a.m. in the morning when we're all drunk, <laughs> like I've done to Jeremy before. I did really. I, I mean, we didn't have time to because John, you didn't stay up late enough. But I did really want to show you that cage match from All Out if you were up still. Because it was oh, yeah. pretty wild. Like, uh, Swerve got power bombed onto that cinder block, and it was a real cinder block, it, too. It did not break. Like, that shit looked Thanks. like it hurt. And they put a fucking needle through his cheek. Like, wow, it was rough. But, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, that's mostly uh, that's mostly what Trevor and that's I awesome. talked about at Jeremy's wedding. But it was pretty cool to because we're both super AEW nerds, so we get to nerd out about AEW and Ring of Fire as well. Or not Ring of Fire. Jeremy just said that and Ring of Honor. Trevor we, also played we, the uh, we we nerd Trevor's out about Ring of played, Honor as well. They got a hold of me. And we're like. Do you want us to play a song? And I wanted them to play that Ramon song they played. Oh, great. Nice. Oh, yeah. I love that song. Yeah, you used to play. Didn't you, like, play drums for that back when we were yeah, in yeah. Ramon's? I fucking love that song so much. Ramon's cover band that we had way back when. The song is The KKK Took My Baby Away Yeah, by the Ramones. Good one. <laughs> they nailed that cover. Yeah. But also. We have uh, two more anniversaries. Yeah. 25th anniversary of Tony Hawk. Tony yeah, Hawk, 25 week. years. It was uh, the 29th, right? His grandkid was just born. 1999, oh, wow. the 29th of 1999 was the original. Tony Do you Hawk know who Tony Lisa. Hawk's son is married to? Who's that? I didn't know he had Francis a son. Bean. Who? Oh, I did hear that. Who? Yep. Yeah, Kurt Cobain's daughter. And uh, oh. yeah, they just had a child. Together. Kurt Cobain has a daughter? Well, he did. Oh, well, I mean, well, she's still she's still alive. Yeah, she's around. <laughs> Sorry, <yep. laughs> I mean, his daughter still exists. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. I don't keep track of celebrities, childs, or childrens. I just it was one of those things I just found randomly and then I didn't even know that they were gonna have a baby and then that showed up in the news like yesterday. It's like, oh. It's like almost like the twenty fifth anniversary of Tony Hawk, but a child. Is born. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Tony Hawk twenty five anniversary. Uh I was uh when I dropped off John, I, I re downloaded the uh Tony Hawk Rock W A R T Radio Tony Hawk Rock, which is a fucking amazing two-hour playlist of all of my favorite Tony Hawks. Tony Hawks from Tony Hawk 1 through 7. I know I say 1 through 6 on the episode, but I do actually use stuff from American Wasteland as well in there. But yeah, uh, like I said earlier, patreon.com slash Podcast. You get that episode for $3 and you can listen to it and it's pretty fucking rad. I had a lot of fun making it and listening to it and all that stuff. So give it a listen. Listen to my Tony Hawk playlist because I can't put because I can't uh, put it on the pre I can't put it on the free feed because if I did they would cancel us yeah because everything is uh is 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 a copyright actually uh, after listening to that episode I was like I really want to play a Tony Hawk game and I was like oh I should stream it and I was like oh wait I can't stream Tony Hawk games because of the music Mm because Jeremy and I actually did try to stream Tony Hawk 3 two player and it got removed so if I did it I'd have to mute all the music and what's the fun of that the fun in the in the Tony Hawk games is the music. So, I mean, it's, it's a big part of the fun. I mean, I, I mean, it's if you if you're playing it silently, it's I don't know, it's not the same for me. Just like that body jar song, it's not just know what they're called. The song called "Not the Same" from Tony Hawk Three. <laughs> like I said, I just listened to it. I just listened. To you're it. not the same. same. You have changed. I don't love you anyway. You're not that the person yep. that I believed in yesterday. Yeah, you know, he just got flagged. Yep, because I sound oh, no. exactly like the song. <laughs> yep, that song. I think I thought Tony Hawk took the occasion of the anniversary to say that they uh, body jar. Actually, I was right. Body jar is the band. He said that <laughs> the series does have a future. So that was the extent of the quote. But that is clearly a hint that that they're making more of these things. I mean, they bothered to do a 25th anniversary logo and everything, uh, update the social media and all that stuff. So yeah, more Tony Hawk is coming. Come on, three and four. Just get I here agree. already. Yeah, we, we yeah I think we talked about it last week somewhat, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually meaning to. I really wanted to play an old Tony Tony Hawk game just because of the anniversary, and I've just been inspired by listening to the music and all that. I'm planning on playing a uh, Tony Hawk four and five. Well, not the what I consider five, which is Tony Hawk Underground. I'm planning on playing those at some point before next week, just because uh, they're fun. And those are the ones that. Well, four is the one I didn't spend as much time with, and five is still my favorite. Well, Tony Hawk Underground 1, a.k.a. 5, to me, is still my favorite Tony Hawk game. And I've said it a million times, they should remake, they should remaster that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth version with seven games for each different skateboarding company that you can join, and it'll sell so many copies. Just do it. It'll be amazing. No, Underground was a great game. But speaking of great games and great companies, Monolith Soft, 25 years. Holy shit. That's pretty cool. I, I saw some fun cool. memes about this where, uh, cause they did a little video showing like stuff from Xeno saga, you know, and Xenoblade Chronicles and all these other games that they did. 
Except for this game called uh, Xenogears that a lot of people like. That's not in there. I saw these little memes of, show, of them celebrating every character and then showing like the main characters of Xenogears like, in, a, in, a, in a cage and it says Square Enix on top of it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't see any of the Xenogears stuff. That sucks because that Xenogears game is really good and I would love to see a proper uh, remake of it or sequel or something. Because uh, yeah, did you ever finish it? I did not finish it, no. But I put a good fifty hours into it, and I did really like it, and I hope to finish it at some point. It's got a sick soundtrack, and it's such a unique game. Like the the play style of it is awesome, and I wish that Square Enix would just give it up because they don't they're not ever going to do anything with it. Like just give it back to Monolith and let them do something with it because it's a beautiful game. But yeah, uh, is there anything else? Because we're that's it for me. There is one. There's one thing I'll just mention for a second that I think is kind of interesting. I haven't fucked around with it yet, but a uh, iPhone Delta emulator is going to get online play for the Nintendo a- ten- Nintendo DS, so I can play the best Mario Kart game of all time, Mario Kart DS, online on my phone. Snake, snake, snake. Do it. No, I'm, I will. I will do it just for that because I love that game so much. And if and if I could play online again, fuck yeah, let's do it. I that. thought it was interesting um, that there is already an existing virtual boy emulator for the switch but they're only using it in the museum at the nintendo museum to emulate virtual boy games so like, they actually <laughs> went through the process of developing this emulator oh, that's that's bogus yeah. bring bring it switch. bring it to us so if you're playing the the at the museum you're playing the virtual boy you're actually playing it on a switch bogus they're uh it's i don't know it, it didn't i just want to double check my my notes before we go uh crow country is coming to the switch on the 16th of october which was actually developed by the people who did Snipper Clips. Oh, okay. Mm. But it, but it's okay. like it, it's like a which Res- is like the launch Switch game. Yeah, well, it's like a Resident Evil, uh, Silent Kill, Silent Hill style, old school PlayStation One horror game, and uh, I'm really excited in it, about it in that way. And it's kind of funny that it came from the people who did something as charming and cute as Snipper Clips, but then we have this like you know this horror game but i think it looks awesome from what i've seen of it and i had heard talk well, about clips is a body horror game for real <laughs> sure <absolutely. laughs> sure but yeah no i think this game looks really cool like the art style of it is awesome also if you watch the new junji you know anime on uh i haven't seen it yet but i want to see it yet. oh man I want it's to see it. straight up body horror that's all it is well i've seen the trailers of it i've seen the live action mo- version of that story and it's not very good but i'd like to see what the anime is like it was visually cool but the anime in one episode just basically was like uh yeah just watch it i want to watch it i'm planning on Definitely watching it. i'm hoping to watch it tomorrow at some point but uh yeah uh just let me check one second do we got to be John honest. Wedgworth, were you wanting to mention something about the museums or was your um was your just was your cursor just there randomly? Oh, uh just <clears throat> trying to keep up on Okay. Keep up wherever we are, yeah. I saw your cursor was. I was like, does John want to talk about the specific thing? No, no, no. Did you um did you read any of the any of the stuff about uh what the Dragon Quest creator and uh, said about the about the, about the like uh, censorship or whatever on the design of the characters and all that. No, it was mm. it's an interesting read just because it's kind of them poking fun at at the at the our country and how we've all been brainwashed to believe that like Christianity is real and all that. He kind of gets pretty dark in it. Uh, he says uh, he says something like uh, you know at how that God is a, is evil disguised as good and that all it does is is just fuck everything up. <clears throat> And that, uh, and that the censorship that's brought about by religion in, in America is actually hurting Japan too. It's an interesting read <laughs> to see to see what they say in there. And I'm kind of like, I mean, on a I, global I, level, I, I, can I agree see that with applying. you. Yeah, I mean, just like you know, well, because nudity is not con- is not in- considered in the same way, and in Japanese culture, unless it's, it's, it's Renaissance nudity. I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, but I mean, you see, like, you, you see nudity in like Dragon Ball, and you see you see it in Gundam, and it's not sexual; it's just nudity. But it's different, you know, it's different here. And he was just kind of like just ranting about. I think he calls I think he calls America a ridiculous country. Yeah, doing business with such a ridiculous country is really frustrating because of that. J- Jap- Japan also gets negatively influenced. It's a direct quote from there. Anyway, I thought it was kind of interesting that he was kind of just. You know, saying "fuck you" to America and to a religion in general, and I say, I, I have agree, no qualms agree, with being with called you. a ridiculous country. Yeah, because we are the most ridiculous of countries. Anyway, that's I think we're good for this episode. Suspected we should have gone longer, but or we would have gone as long, but you know, 
we had a lot to talk about. Thank you so much for joining us, John Wedgworth. Absolutely. Please tell us uh, what you've been doing, where to find you, what you have out there, and all that stuff. Well, okay, so this coming Saturday, uh, Hugh and I will be meeting to record what will be the final regular episode of Nerd Noise Radio Channel 2. We're going to have our best of season 20, or uh, I'm sorry, best of 2024 episode, and we're trying to iron out the details for like a series in review sometime early in 2025. Uh, that will probably be, that'll probably happen, but not, I'm not going to say definitely, but like just in terms of ordinary rank and file episodes, this Saturday we're recording our very last one. Oh my gosh. Uh, and then, yeah, it's a weird feeling. I, well, you know, Hugh, Hugh's been podcasting since 2009 uh, and he turns 50 next year. And so he wanted to, you know, be done with it. <laughs> be done with it. Yeah, go yeah. on to other things. Or at least yeah. obligation style. Well, I think. I mean, other than like the one like onesie twosie loose ends for Nerd Noise Radio and Retro Game Club, I think he really is planning on being like like done done. Like, I mean, hopefully he'll still be at Midwest uh, or uh, MGC. You know, so if we all get to go, we can not only can I, you know, meet the two of you I haven't met in person in person, but introduce you guys to Hugh. You know, because he usually goes. Uh, so I, I still I still want to have him on for a for an ease episode maybe maybe if maybe I can get in contact with him and he can be on for ease ten because I know he's a big Falcom fan right and a big fan of because uh, didn't you guys do a specific uh, Falcom focused episode like because we like both did right it would like we both did our own like ease uh, best of or something like that well so it was one of the very rare times where Hugh guessed guest well so Hugh is not a guest on channel two he's one of the hosts right but yeah. on channel one he's guested on that a couple times right and one of them was the it the name of the episode was literally the falcom episode and he did that he did pretty much everything on that episode so, yeah because we both we both did uh him him and i we both did falcom episodes like around the same time mm -hmm. and i just mm -hmm. remember i had listened to him talk on on your show and he just seemed like a big fan of ease and mm. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've had any fans on there other than me, so it'd be cool to have somebody on to talk about the new, the new Ease game that's coming out at the end of October. Okay, well, I'll certainly, I'll certainly put that bug in his ear. We'll see. You know, I think I have his, I think I have his, uh, or I think I have his email, or I can try to contact him through Twitter or something like that. We can figure it out. But you guys are recording your the final of your uh, the one uh, Ordinary channel episodes. two, yeah, yeah, yeah. This I think this Saturday we're slated to do that. So. And it's going to be, um, it's, the theme is going to be music from after the main game. So that could be end credits, that could be kind of the ending story sequence, that can be, you know, high scores, whatever, right? But just like anything after the end of the proper game is the theme. It's kind of a nice. going away. Yeah. That's uh, it's fitting, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. like what's mm -hmm. the, that'll be fun. It'll be fun to listen yeah. to. So I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah. And that's uh, just their noise radio pretty much everywhere. They can find it. Yeah, Nerd Noise Radio can be found everywhere. I mean, we have a YouTube channel, but it's dormant, so you won't find it. You'll find us there, but you won't find it there. But, you know, uh, <clears throat> I don't recommend people listen to us on Spotify because Spotify has gotten really... Um, they're, they're basically kicking music podcasts off their service. You know, usually Channel 2, uh, channel two episodes will get past the, the system and will stay, but Channel 1 episodes get yeeted every single time. Like, I... I, I, I scheduled the episode to upload on uh, midnight and then I checked my email the next day and at like one twenty five a.m. there's a takedown email. So, so yeah, it's, we're, we're technically there, but that's, that's not the way. Uh, uh, Apple podcasts, uh, Amazon podcasts, audible, you know, uh, any podcatcher of your choice, you know, our, our base service Podbean. you know, those are, those are all places you can find us, but pretty much, I mean, to the best, to the best of my knowledge, if there's, something on the internet called nerd noise radio it's us i don't think there's anything else out there and at this point frankly i don't want to find out if there is <laughs> <laughs> yeah right so let's see that's so so we'll do that um i'm actually working on two channel one episodes concurrently uh i am planning i think i think i i think there will be a 2025 season for channel one uh i don't think that's going to stop it depends uh i'm not i'm 80 percent sure there'll be a 2025 but you know wyatt uh, our six-year-old was diagnosed with autism and ADHD, like I was, and and so that requires a lot 
you know, and trying to be a trying to give him what he needs and be a family man and all that. Was stuff. this after your diagnosis? After my diagnosis, it was actually just a couple, just a uh, maybe two or three months ago. Oh uh, my maybe gosh! Two months ago. Yeah, well, so you're very, his dude for sure. Well, you would think so. You would think so because you know, like we both have this thing. You would think that, like, hey, we understand each other better than uh -huh. everyone else, but <clears throat> uh, not not. There's a saying: if you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. Okay, because right? they we could be so different, right? It's not, and not I, all well, the I same. think I, <clears throat> right. I think um, I think when Wyatt gets old enough to really understand and we can have those heart to hearts and all that stuff, I think that might be when we would like super click, you know, but right now there's, we kind of just tend to lock horns. <laughs> you so know what adversity I mean? like, because it's different. Well, he, or whatever. he goes rigid in one direction. I go rigid in the other direction. Okay. And then like, you know, so, uh, but no, I'm, I, I kind of, we suspected. So it's nice to know. And it's, he has a huge advantage over me knowing I mean, you know, we have this knowledge when he's six, right? So mm -hmm. his whole life is going to be. He's with this not knowledge. even old enough to realize how important it is that. Right. I mean, all, the only thing we can really explain to him is, you know, his brain works differently than a lot of people's, and mine works differently than a lot of people's, and, you know, um, but, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't find out until I was forty-three, so I spent, I spent my whole life just floundering through life, not understanding the all these things, and then when I got my diagnosis, everything just made sense, right? You know, he's not. I imagine they give stuff. you context, but they don't give you solutions, right? It's like uh, I'll put yeah, just illuminates it illuminates your past in a more like scrutable way, but in, in the sense I don't I don't know how it would map your future as well. Well, okay, it gives me it gives me uh, ways to to kind of approach the future. You know, like hey, I know that I know that this isn't going to work. You know, or okay. hey, this could really work. Or you know, I can I can hey, I'm sorry about this. It's because of this, right? You know, or I'm going to need this special accommodation. There's, there's all sorts of ways it can have a practical benefit, but okay. the biggest thing is just having that understanding, having that self compassion, that self forgiveness, that self love. When I got my diagnosis, I literally cried. Uh, when referring to myself, I said, this means I can finally stop being mean to that weird kid now, you yeah. know, because I finally get him. I finally see him. I finally understand him. And, and so, yeah, in a sense, in a sense, in the, in the year since I've gotten my diagnosis, not a lot's changed in their sense, everything has changed. You know, it's, it's had an impact on Jody and I's relationship. You know, we, we understand our dynamic better. We understand because, you know, so, um, we think August is autistic too. So it's just all these connections and stuff and i've you know now i've found this community now i found this identity now i found this you know this purpose and it's, it's so it's really great i i think if anyone thinks they they might be they should find out uh i think self-diagnosis is valid especially considering there's like a 94 percent accuracy rating for it you know 94 percent of people who self-diagnose as autistic who go on to get professionally diagnosed come back is positive so for every 100 people who say i'm autistic there's like six people who are wrong and that's it you know so so it's it's trustworthy i think I, if someone comes to me and says i'm I, i'm self-diagnosed autistic i'm not going to say well go get diagnosed i mean i'm going to say okay welcome you know yeah me you know me too uh i think it's about the empathy and i think it's about what well, i'm speaking like from a little bit outside the bubble but like i'm saying like empathy is the first step to us all getting along better and so well, if that's something that you can find in yourself if you can have empathy for yourself then you're going to be able to well like you said i guess because empathy for yourself is definitely a redundant thing but like you're talking about like the weird kid empathy for the mm -hmm. weird kid mm -hmm. it's kind of what i'm trying well, to say and other people you know other people dealing with me it depends upon what kind of whether they have a, a good understanding of autism or not. I mean, for a lot of people of our generation, you're either Rain Man or you're not autistic. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like, you know, um, there's like different degrees of it, right? Or different uh, amounts, a, or, or what? You know, I don't know. It, it's a it's a spectrum. There are people who are impacted very differently. I mean, some people are nonverbal, right? Some, I I don't like the term high functioning and low functioning because. I think that there's a lot more going on inside the head of quote unquote low functioning people than they can express to us. And then for the purposes of classification on paper, I'm quote unquote high functioning, but I can tell you, I don't feel high functioning. Right. I think, I think a better term would be high masking. I, I you know, you, 
you don't perceive my autism profoundly. That doesn't mean I don't, right? You know what I mean? So <clears throat> I can... But you're probably limited to an extent because you have to uh, you have to put effort into masking. So it's probably ultimately like slowing you down in other regards. Sure. But I've also been doing it. I mean, I, I mean, I'm 44. I've the first 43 years of my life. I did it without realizing I was doing it, you know? So mm -hmm. there's, it's so ingrained that it's something I actually have to kind of now unlearn, you know, okay. which I'm slowly sort of kind of doing, you know, and I'll do more as time goes on. But, um, but we, we, uh, I think were you saying that you might have less time for podcasting? I think is originally where it where it came yeah. from the where we yeah. kind of got did, off track. How yeah? How did how did we get here? No, um, yeah, I I'm ninety nine percent. Well, I'm eighty percent sure there will be a season twenty twenty five for Channel One, uh, and if it doesn't happen, it's because of stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, that's how we. Got. I did offer to. Uh, if you ever got the itch to do like what you and Hugh were doing, if you ever, even if it was just like a one-off, if you ever wanted to do one, you know, with me, I'd, 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 I'm available, you know, if you ever want to try to do it. Well, let's definitely plan on doing a one-off. Or, 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 or a version of it or whatever, like one where we just hang out and talk about specific songs or whatever, because, you know, I'm always into that. So, yeah, well, yeah, I don't know if I'd, let's, do, let's, you know what, let's do this. You know, Channel 2 was born from a one-off that Hugh and I did. I mean, when Hugh and I did our one-off in 2019, there was no plan to make a show out of that, right? Mm -hmm. It was just like, hey, we let's do this, let's have fun, and then it ended up turning into a show. So let's let's plan on doing a one-off, and then... You could, you could call it Nerd Wart Radio. Let's say, do you have a, do you have a <laughs> sure. Channel 3? Because Trey's name is based off being the third. That is true. Channel Trey. That is true. Nerd Wart Channel Trey. That is correct. Yeah, no, we could always, and we could always like for future feature it on both channels or something like that. That's something to talk about in the future. But we're uh, we're pretty long here. Uh, we've been on this for a long time, so I gotta so I gotta wrap it up here. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody for listening to uh, for this as long as you have, and definitely check out uh, everything that John that John Wedgeworth is doing with Nerd Noise Nerd Noise Radio and all that. I'll put links on the episode and whatnot, and also you can check out us at uh, Nintendo. Uh, at patreon.com slash Nintendo main podcast. Like I said, uh, you can get, you can get bonus episodes for a dollar or $5 or whatever, or you can buy episodes individually for $3. There's a whole bunch of them out there, uh, for that. If you just want to hear some of uh, some of our bonus stuff, what is it? We just did. We just, uh, put out the episode where we talked about Jeremy's, uh, uh, pre-wedding uh, bachelor party at the Galloping Ghost, which I thought came out really well. So fun. You can check that out. And also the WRT radio for, uh, for last month's, uh, Whatever, you know, where we take all the intros and outros of Nintendo Main and Expansion Pack and all that and make it into an hour-long playlist. You can check that out, too. On there, plus uh, early videos and whatever on uh, for different levels. Check it out on Patreon. And also, uh, yeah, on uh, on Twitter, at Nintendo underscore Domain and at JMaxStack. And find us on Facebook at... Just look up Nintendo Main. You'll find it everywhere. And all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, we've been your hosts. I'm Trey Johnson. Jeremy Kowski. John Nitter. And our special guest, St. John of Nerd Noise Radio. All right. And thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next time. See ya. <laughs>
surrounding things. Oh, okay. It's not a horrible thing, but it, it, it is a thing. Interesting. I'm saving it. I'm saving it. All right, we'll save it. Shantova. Oh yeah, happy Shantova to whoever celebrates. I'll say, isn't that your wife's name? I don't even <laughs> think you say happy Shantova. I think Shana, Shana Toba? Shana Toba. 